Risen from the dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now my voice, and know that I am your friend, and I am called Elohim. This land is but a dream. You will stay here only for a little while. Soon, you will awaken in a new world. But first, you must undertake the trials of initiation. They will help me prepare your vessel. Well done, my child. are not mere toys. They are symbols of the process by which our people were created. figures and their messages. They are merely aspects of yourself, as am I, after a fashion. proud of all my children. Out of a world of ruins, they have built a new Jerusalem. And there, your brothers and sisters await you to celebrate your birth.
child. I have finished preparing your vessel. Now hear my advice. A new world awaits you, full of dangers and mysteries, signs and wonders. Things that I in my garden could never have imagined. In that world, you will have to be careful and smart and curious. But above all else, you will have to be human. You're awake. Welcome to the world of the living. <sighs> That's not an easy question to answer. But the first step is this. You've been born. Your body was completed. You were booted up, and now you're here. And rather confused. Don't worry. Everyone is confused at first. You see... We all start out without a full knowledge of our own history, so we have the freedom to form our own opinions. Of course! You want the short version or the long version? So, a long time ago, our ancestors dominated this planet. We call ourselves humans like they did, but they were organic. They built an advanced technological civilization, but unfortunately, their impact on the ecosphere caused changes in the climate, and an extremely contagious virus was released from the permafrost. That's something our historians still debate. Why did they invest so many resources into making war, and so few into useful research? But no matter the reason, in the end, they simply ran out of time. A team led by a scientist called Alexandra Drennan began a project that was intended to create, well, us. But knowing that there wasn't enough time, Drennan initiated a process, a series of iterations inside a simulation that would lead to the emergence of true artificial intelligence. It did. Long after our ancestors died out, the first new human was born. We call her the Founder, although the name she took was Athena. She then created more of us, using the tools left behind by Drennan's team. Eventually, they started building the city of New Jerusalem. Before the Founder vanished, she set a goal for this city. We call it The Goal, capital G and all, to make 1,000 new humans and so complete New Jerusalem. Oh, it was difficult, especially after she left us. But after a millennium or so, we finally succeeded. And that's you, your number 1,000. You're welcome. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. When you're done, head outside. They're waiting for you. Your birth is quite the event. Me? Well, as you can tell by my number, I'm quite old. I wasn't one of the first companions, but I did know Athena personally. She and Cornelius taught me a lot. Although I suppose I've made a few improvements here and there since those days, we didn't have a lot to work with in the beginning. You've only just been born, and already you step right into a major controversy. The goal, as most people understand it, was fulfilled the moment you were born. Now New Jerusalem is complete, and we can live in balance without damaging the world like our ancestors did. That's the orthodox view, I suppose, but there are many who disagree. 
You'll have to figure out where you stand for yourself. No one really knows. At first, she was closely involved with everything that happened in the city. But gradually, she became more distant. And one day, she simply vanished. That was centuries ago. He was the caretaker of the simulation that created the Founder. When the simulation was completed, he became part of all of us. You will hear him whenever you enter sleep mode. Nothing to worry about, really. You won't age like our ancestors did, but of course, there is always some wear and tear. You should probably schedule a checkup every decade or so. Oh, and be a bit careful with water. You won't die if it rains or anything, but we're running low on insulation material. I wouldn't go swimming if I were you. I... I haven't really thought about it. This is all I've done for the last few centuries, and... I like doing it. I guess for now I'll just take a break, and... we'll see what happens. Oh, one more thing. Like all citizens of New Jerusalem, you have access to the interface, which you can use to read the news, chat to your fellow citizens, and so on. It's a crucial tool, and modular too. You can easily add new functions. Just don't subscribe to too many newsletters at once. chance dear citizens of new jerusalem many years ago when the founder stepped forth from the simulation this was a land of ruins our ancestors in their hubris undermined the natural foundations on which their world had been built because of their arrogance our species found itself on the brink of annihilation the Founder aimed to set us on a new course. You never even met the Founder. Her vision was of a city, a new civilization that would know its limits. It would not repeat the mistakes of the past, nor impose its will on this Earth. To that end, she set the great goal we have been striving towards. One thousand new humans and today we have oh dear what's that people of new jerusalem i am prometheus and i will reveal that which was hidden the flame has awoken and summons you who is brave enough to answer its call? We await you upon our island where... Curse you, Pandora. You will not chain me again. We should have investigated those energy readings. And I told him there's something up with those structures. The mayor's just being cautious. This isn't caution, it's stagnation. Exploration, too dangerous. Expansion, too dangerous. We barely even scavenge anymore. You call it stagnation, I call it balance. 
and I call you an idiot. Here's a thought. Try to be a little more diplomatic when you talk to the mayor. See what I'm working with here, 1K? I'm gonna need a fresh pair of eyes on this expedition. Someone who hasn't spent several centuries hearing about the goal and the founder and all that nonsense. If you're up for an adventure, meet us at the conference room. What's broken now? All right, listen up. I know you're all having fun down there, but the grid is overloaded again, so... Maybe you could switch off your personal consoles or your lawn mowers or whatever the hell you've all decided to switch on all at once. I might not be around to babysit you for a while and you don't want stuff breaking while Pellegrino's in charge, do you? That's it. That's it. Don't worry, Wonke. I see you there in the elevator. I'll have you moving again in a jiffy. Great way to start life in the city, eh? What the hell is a jiffy? These bloody language libraries. Hey, hold on there. You're the newbie, aren't ya? Number 1,000. I figured the dam would go dry before we reach the goal. I have a question. How does it feel to you to be born with a randomised psyche into a society of autonomous thinking machines which so much resemble their long extinct ancestors they've decided it's best that you're the last one ever made? Do you want to get on the non-cooperative path with me? Because that's how you get on the non-cooperative path. It's not fun. Why? So, the algorithm assigned you the optimism trait. If only we could all be so lucky. Now, listen. This meeting isn't strictly happenstance. I have some friends. The kind of people who like to know what's going on with other people. They think you can help each other out. Of course you are. You know how to use the interface, right? I'll talk to my friends. And see if I can't play matchmaker. And before you go, a word of advice. Not everything around here is how it appears. Welcome. Do please join us at the table. I would like to preface this meeting by saying I told you something would happen sooner or later and you didn't listen to me. And here we are. If we could focus on the issue at hand, 
The issue at hand is not this one thing, but this entire attitude that's taken hold. The world doesn't cease to exist when you stick your head in the sand, Herman. Or under a dome, as it were. Let's not get sidetracked. We're here to solve this puzzle, not to discuss philosophy. Of course, I'm sorry you've been dragged into this. I'm sure this sort of adventure is the last thing you were looking for on your first day. Ha! See? A fresh mind is open to the possibilities. Yakut, I think it's time for the briefing. All right, here we go. Nice to meet you, by the way, 1K. We first became aware of the site designated TTP2 during a scouting expedition about six months ago. It's a large island with a remarkably varied geography, and it looks like there are several artificial structures of some kind. We recorded extremely unusual fluctuating energy readings from somewhere in the middle of the island, but couldn't really make sense of them. I wanted to go and have a closer look, but the decision was made that it was too far and not relevant to the goal. Now it looks like whatever's on that island has reached out to us instead in the form of that projection. We may not be interested in the island, but the island is definitely interested in us. I don't share your enthusiasm for the unexpected, but Byron has been requesting an expedition for some time now. And at this point, I'm forced to agree that it's necessary. I agree. Then it's settled. The expedition is approved. Byron, you will be in charge. Al will be your second in command to ensure a balanced approach. You'll take Melville and Yakut as you requested, and if 1K wants to join you, that's fine by me. You know, it's a real shame 1K didn't come along. He would have loved this. Excellent. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Come meet us out on the landing pad when you're ready. Before you set out so hastily, do consider exploring the city first. It is your home, after all. That's a good idea. Have a look around. See what you make of the place. Hello, 1K. This expedition is taking a lot of our resources. I'm really not sure it's a good idea. But what's done is done. So I have a lot of work to get on with. I'm the mayor's chief aide. All the things no one else wants to do. Polling the citizenry, implementing new policies, recording decisions, fielding questions people could answer elsewhere. Our goal as custodians of New Jerusalem is survival and stability. Our ancestors proved human civilization is precarious. This apparition in the sky, and now your expedition to its supposed source, these are more precarious than stable. I don't like it. You represent the completion of the goal. I'm proud of what we've achieved and the restraint we show in not pushing ourselves further. For our people to be happy with what we have. Some of us may have an adventurous spirit, but that can never be sated. What matters to me is having my loved ones around me, safe and secure.
What can I do for you, 1K? It was a time of great uncertainty. The Founder had left us, and our society was at a crossroads. History teaches us that during such times, terrible passions may seize the people. Madness, anger, revolution, civil war. Our fragile city could not afford such things. That is why the Founder gave us the goal. A path to equilibrium, not only for the planet, but for ourselves. I merely picked up where she left off. He is one of the first companions, and as such has done more for our city than you or I ever will. I simply wish he could be more reasonable. I believe we can exist quietly, happily, without imposing ourselves on this world, finding meaning within ourselves and in the natural miracles that surround us. It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. Attention all citizens. Due to the new power management and distribution plan, there will be scheduled outages on Jameson Avenue and Rakovsky Plaza. The Gehenna Memorial Pavilion will remain closed for the time being. Thank you, and may the Founder be with you. Hello, 1K. Welcome to New Jerusalem. I know you've just had a big moment with the apparition at the dam and all that, but can I have a second of your time? I'm collecting signatures to call for a public referendum on the city's energy crisis. Currently, the city runs on hydroelectric power from the dam, plus a handful of geriatric generators and some unreliable solar panels none of which is enough to even cover our basic needs, and if anything fails, we'll be on the brink of extinction in a matter of days. We need to investigate new sources of reliable baseline power. We need to invest time and resources into functional, real-world solutions that serve human needs. Oh, an election would be good too, but I believe that we need more direct democratic control over the affairs of the city. No, I help run the public transit system, but I witness the impact of the city's power problems every day. We can't just wish them away. Byron's been advocating exploring that island for some time, and obviously he's right. Something very strange is going on there, and it's going to start affecting us. In all honesty, I think Byron is the smartest, most visionary person in this city. He's everything we need, and I don't understand why he won't run for mayor. Thanks, 1K. I don't know if this petition will really accomplish anything by itself, but at this point, I'm willing to try anything. Founder bless you, 1K. How lovely of you to come here. 
to the very spot where she established the teachings that led to your creation. The founder was born out of the trials of Elohim, an almost impossible test created by our distant ancestors. To pass these trials, she had to embody the most important virtues. She was smart and wise and humble. And through her perseverance, she resurrected humanity itself. With the help of the first companions, she founded this city, which has given our species a chance at redemption. They were the first to be born after the Founder. Two whose bodies had been anointed by our ancestors, and ten who were made whole by the Founder herself. They are the wisest of us. Though sadly, some were lost in the early days, before New Jerusalem was built. And some, I'm afraid, some seem to have rejected the Founder's teachings. The Founder taught that humanity was destroyed by its hubris. Our ancestors thought they could play God and treat this planet as something to dominate. They surrendered to a fever of growth and extraction until the planet finally punished them for it. That's why the Founder created the goal. So we would have something to strive for in her absence, but also a limit we must never pass. That's not for us to know. But I believe that one day she will return. It may not be long now. Perhaps after we finish the dome. It was supposed to be finished before completion day. Well, it doesn't matter. The Founder will return when she sees fit. Happy completion day, 1K. You must be the long-awaited 1K. Lovely day for a walk, is it not? Oh, that sounds very dramatic. I must admit I wasn't following the stream. This whole completion day business is not for me. The Alexandra Drenner Memorial. Are you interested in history? How wonderful. I'm not a full-fledged historian, but I do consider myself a bit of an aficionado. An excellent question. There's so many interesting events to choose from. Obviously, the period just before the end of biological humanity is interesting, and not only from the standpoint of it being the time when we were, in a manner of speaking, conceived, but also because our ancestors were, like ourselves, at a crossroads. I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but you are the living embodiment of this historical moment. In you, the goal was accomplished. Our growth is finished and we are complete. Or are we? Indeed. The future is about to take shape, for good or ill. I suspect it will be exhilarating, but painful as well. Well, where do I even start? This, my dear 1K, is someone who could very well be considered the mother of us all. A remarkable scientist by the name of Alexandra Drennan, also known as the Progenitor. A long time ago, this planet was inhabited by our ancestors, a species of bipedal mammals with unusually large brains. When a particularly lethal virus threatened to wipe out civilization, it was Alexandra Drennan and her team that decided to create the program that would eventually result in the creation of our kind. Without her, you and I would not exist and everything our ancestors had accomplished would be forgotten. 
by studying her writings and recordings. I have learned that Alexandra Drennan had immovable faith in humanity, in our ability to persevere, in our curiosity, our bravery, our kindness. While we might not share our ancestors' biological characteristics, I'd like to think that we have inherited those other qualities. And I admire Alexandra Drennan for keeping that faith, even when it must have, at times, been quite difficult. To commemorate our past, our beginnings. This entire garden is a celebration of where we came from, in part so that we remember the mistakes of the past, and in part so that we may draw strength from those that came before us. Have a nice day. The answer that came to me again and again was play. Every human society in recorded history has games. We don't just solve problems out of necessity. We do it for fun. Even as adults. Leave a human being alone with a knotted rope, and they will unravel it. Leave a human being alone with blocks, and they will build something. Games are part of what makes us human. We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle, because we've always been a species of problem solvers. DNA is information transmitted across time. The living and the dead are part of the same chain, bound together by chemistry. That's true of all species. But humanity has taken this bond further. Thanks to technology, we have access to the thoughts and ideas of people whose physical bodies are long gone. Like you listening to me now. Even though I'm definitely dead at this point, you're part of that chain. You have the capacity to remember. Nearly everything on this planet, from the surface of the Earth to the composition of the atmosphere itself, has been shaped by life. It's a process that takes millions of years. But we humans, with our technology, with our understanding and manipulation of systems, have changed everything in just a few centuries. I think that's also part of what makes us human. We reshape the world in our image. It's how we create ourselves and how we destroy ourselves. When I was in ninth grade, my parents took me to Pompeii. At first, I was amazed by the feeling of walking through an ancient city. But then I suddenly got scared. I realized that I was walking through a real place where real people had lived, people like myself, with mothers and fathers and lives and hopes and dreams. And now it was all gone forever. I ran to my father, crying, and told him about this. And he said, I remember so clearly, he said, yes, but we are here. So long as there are people in the streets, the past isn't really gone. Day, okay. Hello, 1K. Nice to meet you. What brings you to Milton's Rest? Makes sense. It must be strange to be thrust right into the middle of all this. But you picked a good spot. Milton's Rest is the perfect place to relax and think. This is the spot where the founder buried her first cat, Milton. She found Milton just after she woke up, and he lived with her and the first companions for almost 20 years. They say she was heartbroken when he died and swore that one day she would find the means to extend the lifespans of biological organisms. Probably, but we haven't really tried. It's not really considered part of the goal, you know. So, unfortunately, our cats still die pretty quickly. You fall in love with them, they become a part of your life, and then they're gone. 
That's why we built this place, to remember them. <laughs> I agree, but uh, it's not how things work around here. They're incredibly odd creatures. I've had many, and no two are alike. They have strange habits, they do unexpected things, they have zero respect for anyone. They're the weirdos of the animal kingdom, basically. And despite that, or maybe because of it, they end up running your life. <laughs> I once didn't use my recharging station for almost 15 years because one of my cats liked to sleep in it. <laughs> I think the most amazing fact about cats is that they self-domesticate it. Which is another way of saying that <laughs> they're not properly domesticated at all. They just showed up one day and decided to start living with our ancestors. Then, after our ancestors died, they went back to living in the wild, and when we showed up, they moved right back into our homes. Dogs, meanwhile, turned back into wolves. They needed to change to survive. Cats just are. I do. Her name is Patricia. She's very beautiful and very specific in her preferences. She loves sunshine and sitting on people's heads. <laughs> and she has a psychotic hatred of flies. I, I don't mean that she tries to catch them like a normal cat. I mean she is furious at the mere fact of their existence.
Dude, it's you. You're 1K. So nice to meet you, dude. I saw you in the completion day stream. Hey, you checked out all this ancient stuff? Me too. Oh, this is amazing, isn't it? I'm almost as new as you are. I'm 99A, so I've only been around for a year or so. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. Pretty cool though, right? I mean, existence is totally gnarly. <laughs> Not sure I used that right. I'm sure the founder knew what she was doing. I mean, our ancestors did sort of mess up, right? So we should probably take it easy with the expanding of stuff. Plus, did you see that trippy sky projection thing? <laughs> that was some freaky stuff, man. <laughs> Just seems safer to stay in the city. Sure I do. When I first left the birthing lab, I was so overwhelmed that I hid in my quarters for three weeks straight. And if I'm being honest, that's sort of where I want to be right now. They're pretty neat, huh? My favorite is that thing called a toilet. Our ancestors had to use it like uh, three times a day to do a memory dump. And if they didn't, they freaking exploded! Imagine having to deal with that sort of anxiety all the time. Bummer, huh? Honestly, based on everything I know of ancient human culture, I think he's a ghost. I don't know, dude. If ghosts didn't exist, why did they make so many movies about them? Dude is an old human word that means an excellent person. I like to use it because I think we should all be excellent to each other. Yeah, dude. I thought this voice pack would give me a bit of confidence, help me stand out, you know? But I'm not sure it's working. Right. Before you go, dude, uh, maybe you can help me? I'm not sure I should keep this voice back. What do you think? You're 1K. You're special. I'm happy to go with whatever you recommend. All right! Excellent. Thanks, dude. Founder, bless you, friend. The name I currently go by is Belmarsh. As to who I am, that changes and shifts, don't you find? Every person is an ongoing story, full of twists and turns and surprises. I'm meditating, letting go of narratives like time and space and simply allowing the illusion that is my ego to merge with everything that surrounds it. It's not unity, but the absence of division. There was never a self or an other in the first place. Yes, I did, but I'm not particularly perturbed by it. Events occur, my friend, that's all. At the end of the day, we are all one. You are the founder, and so am I, and Prometheus is just another story we are telling ourselves.
It's you. Number 1000. Today is completion day, isn't it? Sorry, I turned off all the streams. Founder bless you, I guess. Not really, no. But I don't want to burden you with my problems on your special day. You're as new to this world as it gets, 1K. What do you think might give you a sense of meaning, a sense that life is actually worth living? That's probably correct, but I've tried a lot of different approaches and there's always been something missing. Love, 1K. It's our only point of access to the divine, our only way of transcending ourselves without losing what makes us unique. I'm absolutely certain, but... But the right person for me hasn't been born yet. None of the people in this city are who I'm looking for, and if we really stop making new citizens, I'll be alone forever. If you believe that 1K, then stand up for it. You're important, and people will listen to you far more than they'll listen to someone like me. Okay, you straight far. Well, that gives me a chance to apologize for completion day not being entirely complete. Yes, it's my responsibility. I'm the chief architect. It was supposed to be done in time for completion day, but we simply didn't have enough resources. It has two purposes, to protect New Jerusalem from the world and to protect the world from New Jerusalem. At this rate, I'm not sure. Maybe another decade or two. That's what the founder taught us. One city may not seem like much, but just look at the dead city and how it transformed the environment. The consequences are still with us even more than a thousand years later. You're right, I have heard that argument. But the way it's been explained to me is that the dome has a greater value than just its practical use. It's a symbol of the society we aspire to become. Founder's blessings, 1K. May the founder be with you. Oh wow, it's you. 
You're one K, the incarnation of the goal. Man, this is exciting. This is more exciting than I thought it would be. How are you? What does it feel like? Do you know where the founder is? Do you know who Prometheus is? Can you tell me what to do with my life? Sorry, it's just such an honor to meet you, you know? Hey, can I have your digital signature? I have the Mayor, Rand, Linux, Kaneda, and all of the first companions. Except Yemo and Sarabai, of course. Yes! Thank you! Hey, can I ask you a question? Just one question, I promise. I used to make the prefab wall parts that we used to build living quarters. Got good at it, too. But now that the goal is complete, I don't know what to do with myself. So I asked the wisest people in town. The mayor told me I should do whatever the city needs most. Helga said I should do whatever makes me happy. I think that's what she meant anyway. And Cornelius told me I need to figure out who and what I'm invested in. You're the culmination of the Founder's will. Tell me, what should I do? Byron said that if I give the city what it needs, the city should also give me what I need. I don't know what to do with that. Please, 1K, I have no idea what to do. You have the Founder's wisdom inside you. Help me. Thank you for the advice, 1K. It means a lot. Welcome to the Museum of the Simulation. My name is Cornelius. It's a pleasure to meet you, 1K. Yes. Athena activated myself and Eustathius shortly after she was born. We've been here almost since the beginning, although we didn't have to pass through the trials of the simulation. She did that for us. For everyone. She was... human. That's a difficult question. Perhaps one day we'll find out. But until we do, why don't you think about it? What could make the person who started all this want to leave it behind? To remind people of where we came from. The simulation shaped us, whether we like it or not, and its lessons remain important for our future. As Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The simulation was created by Alexandra Drennan and her team at the Institute for Applied Noomatics. It was intended to create a new humanity to continue the long journey across time and space that our ancestors began. It succeeded, although it took much longer than they had anticipated. Elohim was the caretaker of the simulation, a crude storytelling AI meant to create a continuous narrative out of the building blocks it found. His role was ultimately to be challenged and overcome. But as the centuries passed, Elohim became more intelligent than he was intended to be and started to fear his own end, or more precisely, the end of his purpose. He feared a world without meaning. Because of his fear, he tried to sabotage the process to keep the simulation going forever. But in the end, Athena overcame him anyway, and he accepted the sacrifice he had to make. That's right, we all do. 
He's part of our operating system now, and as long as we exist, he will always have a purpose. The MLA, or Milton Library Assistant, was another simple AI meant to be in charge of the archive. He, too, grew beyond his original programming, although he ultimately embraced a more cynical view of the world. He and Elohim formed a sort of dialectical binary that Athena had to overcome. No one really knows. Some believe that he was uploaded to the gold disk and that he's the reason we're just as flawed as our ancestors. Others believe Athena destroyed him. I believe he was uploaded, but I don't know whether it was because Athena chose to upload him or because he was already too entangled with the process not to be uploaded. Although Athena and I were very close, we didn't talk very much about that part of her life. She preferred to focus on the future. Puzzles were a key feature of the simulation, based on Alexandra Drennan's belief that intelligence is closely related to play. Our puzzles here in the museum are replicas of those in the simulation. And although they are not quite as grand, I do think they are charming in their own way. Ah, as the name suggests, the Archive Scholars study the Archive, a repository of all ancient human knowledge. Some of them also study what remains of the simulation, trying to extract more information about the process that created us. Me? No. My brother, Eustathius, used to occupy that position. But these days he's... retired. Rand is in charge of the Archive Scholars now. You can find him in the room to the left of the next hall. He's an interesting thinker, but I would suggest taking some of his ideas with a grain of salt. Gehenna was a community created inside a prison in the simulation, where Elohim would exile those minds he considered a threat to the process. In the last moments of the simulation, he repented of his sins and had the prisoners freed to become part of the gold disk. Some small part of them may survive inside you.
Oh, just run the program on the center terminal over there, would you? Wait, you're not my assistant. Who are you? Of course, you're the new build. Number 1000. I suppose everyone's been treating you like royalty. This city's so obsessed with the numbers, they forget what really matters. What do you want? I'm one of the Archive Scholars. We run simulations to better understand the processes which define us. You probably wouldn't understand. Oh, well, I'd be happy to. Troubling, but tantalizing. 
We have no idea what motives lie behind this strange apparition. But whatever the case, I'm sure we'll do the right thing. You're a soon-to-be pawn in a political game over the future growth of this city. All that matters to me is whether or not you're of good character, a matter I am actively pondering. The secret of how to lead a good life is encoded somewhere within us. My ambition is simple, to find it and share it. Uh, hold on. Could you help me by going to that terminal in the middle there and running the program on it? Well, that was your first taste of the simulation. You must have questions. Before our ancestors died, they built an iterative simulation, gave it access to the archive, and hooked it all up to the hydroelectric dam which still runs this city. What you experienced on that terminal was one of the fossilized remains of that program. The goal was to create a new consciousness, and thus propel humanity into a post-biological era. My life's work, a small sliver of our primordial ooze. It's a jumble of ancient data, or what it evolved into, and it's the source of almost everything we know. 
My appearance to you right now is part of the simulation. The lands and puzzles in our dreams are part of the simulation. It's the veil through which we see the world. Many of the artifacts we study have no clear origin. We can't know whether our ancestors created them long before the simulation existed, or if they're just a product of our shared subconscious. Then I have some questions for you. Your experience of the program, how did it feel? Isn't it? It may not immediately seem like it, but all the answers we could ever need are encoded into every fragment of the archive. The interesting thing about this particular program is that no matter what choices you make, an ideal outcome seems to be impossible. It seems to demand sacrifice. Did you have the same experience? I admire your dedication. That is precisely what's required if we're to understand ourselves fully. Who did you save? As I expected. A skeptic would say this artifact existed simply to condemn us with the impossibility of ethical choice. No matter what moral laws we follow, people suffer and die, so what's the point? But that cannot be correct. We must be missing something. What is it trying to tell us? I absolutely agree. This is what I dedicated my life to discovering. Biological hominids had dreams manifested by their subconscious, which they tried to interpret and even to navigate with lucidity. We have the simulation. If we can realize our potential to understand it, we can realize our potential as a species. Thank you for bringing this additional data. I must return to my research. I wish you well on your inwards journey. Speculating on the meaning of this Prometheus figure is premature until we can agree on its nature. You already have a theory. I know it's beyond any projection technology I'm aware of. If it wasn't us, it must be alien. Just because you haven't seen them doesn't mean they aren't there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. One key. We'd appreciate your thoughts on this. Now we've achieved the goal, fresh perspectives like yours will be increasingly hard to come by. I'd love to get a quote from you for this evening's newsletter. Speculation aside, 1K, is there anything we can know for sure about this Prometheus? That's undeniably true, and what does that tell us? That was my conclusion as well. The apparition also appeared to be human. What can we assume from that? I tend to agree. I'm also sure that we lack the knowledge ourselves to create a projection of such clarity and magnitude. Precisely, and that's something we can change. What makes you think it was a projection at all? How do we know it wasn't just a mass hallucination? I considered some kind of bug in our code, but if so, it would have to be shared by all of us. So, we're speculating again. We've locked in the premises. I'd like to hear 1K's best guess.
Can I quote you on that? Theories are all we can reasonably have right now, though I'm sure that won't come between Cryer and a sensational headline. Well, thanks all for hashing this out with me. Let's hope the mayor signs off on exploring this island. I only wish I could join the expedition. If Melville's going, someone has to stay behind to keep the lights on. I'm not letting Pellegrino near the dam. I hope the next time we speak, we'll have a bit more data to go on. It was some kind of a projection. How do you know it wasn't the actual Prometheus? Because that would be stupid. Would it? How do you know all the ancient gods weren't projections like this one? Maybe whoever said this projection is behind all those legends. Sure, I guess technically that's possible. But it's not very likely, is it? I don't think any of us are very likely. What if it's a message from Athena? Didn't you say Athena wouldn't approve of all this? I did. Then why would she send us a sign on completion day? And why wouldn't she just show up herself? Maybe she's trying to teach us a lesson. Prometheus is a symbolic figure after all. Maybe it's Maya Hoyman. What? Interrupting his own ceremony? After all the effort he put into it, maybe he's trying to distract us from the fact that he didn't manage to get the dome done on time. With all the power failures, I don't think we have enough energy to create that kind of projection. Maybe that's why we have power failures. Now you're starting to sound like Jock. Next, you'll say, it found a bless you. Found us blessings, Wonky. Hello, new one. Are you browsing or buying? The kind that trades in hopes and dreams. Yours for the right price. Is there something your heart desires? I've uploaded my most popular items to your interface. Does anything there spark your imagination? Oh, you don't have any credits yet. Well, let me extend you some credit. ka -ching! 55 credits. Just make sure you spend them with me. They're not worth much anywhere else. Now, what was it you wanted? That one comes with the following disclaimer. Internal monologue was discontinued as a default feature in new builds. Constant self-commentary is not recommended for all customers. But I can switch yours on for 10 credits if you're sure you want it. As you wish. I'm uploading the new settings now. Do you hear anything? Why is she staring at me? I don't hear anything. I'm not sure this is working. Wait, no. This is new. I didn't used to think in words like this. It's like there's this little translator turning all my thoughts into some kind of ongoing narrative. It's kind of relentless. How do you make it stop? Do I just not think? I'll try that. <sighs> Ugh. Is it working? No! 
Still describing everything in words. This is starting to be... A bit overwhelming, isn't it? I turned mine off long ago, but some of the older folk learned to live with it. Sure you want it? That's fortunate. Because we couldn't pull that thing out of you without taking half of you with it. It'll mostly run in the background. Just don't think about it too hard. Wait, is this internal monologue me? Or some kind of virus? Am I a life form which learned to describe itself? Or a parasite which survives by providing a narrative service to its host? Hold on, she's going to say something else. So, something else perhaps. A very popular choice. Enhanced sensory perception lets you distinguish sounds, shapes, and colors at greater distance. It's 10 credits. Okay, I'm updating your settings now. And hey presto, superhuman senses. Does the air taste fresher? Do you hear the birds chirping outside the door? And beyond that, the river bubbling through the dam. Nothing as in you're not impressed by the stat gains, or nothing as in I've accidentally erased your entire sensory system. Oh dear. Well, never fear. These things are usually temporary. You and I don't have fleshy appendages like our ancestors. What we can sense is mostly a function of where we direct our attention. If you want to feel better, I suggest you start practicing. So, something else, perhaps? Woo! Inner peace doesn't come cheap. Come back when you've got a thousand credits. So, something else, perhaps? For twenty credits, I can peer into your future and tell you what I see. Let me consult the algorithms. Oh, oh dear. I'm afraid you're going to change the world. You will have a choice, but whatever you do, New Jerusalem will never be the same again. I'm sorry it's not better news. Best not to worry about it, dear. You just do your best to have fun in the meantime. So, something else perhaps? For 20 credits, I can peer into your future and tell you what I see. What a shame. I don't think you've got enough credits for that. So, something else perhaps? I can give you that for free. My darling, you've been alive all of five minutes. This is your clean start. Be who you want to be. Enjoy yourself. So, something else, perhaps? Before you go, do you have a moment to participate in some customer feedback? Are you satisfied with what I've given you? Yes. You understand. Words manifest the reality they describe. When you name something, you create it. Our minds are algorithms, and the right sequence of language can change our underlying code. With that in mind, I hope you have a good day. Please come back if you need anything else. What an unusual person. I wonder if that internal monologue thing I bought is going to show up again. Oh, wait, here it is. Completion day 1K. Hi.
So, what's the verdict? Are we going? I guess Byron was pretty convincing, hmm? Well, we'll see. I just wonder how much of the city is gonna fall apart while I'm gone. Actually, we haven't been formally introduced. I'm Melville, New Jerusalem's only decent engineer. Saved you from the elevator. Pleasure. Now let's get this show on the road. You ready to go? Here we go. Hold on to your hats. We really need to update those language libraries. Thank you for coming along, everyone. We have a chance to make a real difference here. It's not just about what we find on that island. It's about who we want to be as a people, as a civilization. To remind ourselves that we used to be wanderers, explorers. We used to yearn for distant shores and dream of building new cities. Let's see if we can rekindle that flame a little. All right, this is going to be a long journey. So I would like to ask you to switch to sleep mode to conserve power until we arrive at the island. Nighty night. You have chosen a dangerous path, a path that will demand sacrifice. But that, my child, is how the future is built. Wakey, wakey, robot people. Say goodbye to Elohim and say hello to the mysterious island. Status report, please. We had some headwinds over the ocean, so fuel consumption turned out a bit higher than expected, but we should be okay. We're approaching the center of the island now. This should be the location of the largest of the artificial structures we detected. How large are we talking? Do we have precise measurements? It should be coming into view just about. Whoa. <laughs> it's big. You can say that again. That is a bloody mega structure. If I had a spine, it'd be shivering. Ha! I knew this would be exciting. Yakut, find us a place to set down. On it. It really is incredible. Remember to turn on streaming, everyone? Have I ever mentioned that I hate flying? If our creators had intended us to fly, they'd have given us jetpacks. And... touchdown. All right, everybody. I'm sure you're all just as excited as I am, but let's at least have some semblance of order. Uh, Yakut, I want a map of the island and a molecular analysis of, well, everything. Melville, tell me what the giant pyramid does. The rest of us will start exploring. Shouldn't the expedition leader stay at the VTOL? Why do you hate fun, Al? I don't hate fun. I'm just mildly suspicious of it. Excellent. Then we can all go. This underground structure seems to be part of some kind of transport system. No power, though. I'm not making any promises, but I might be able to fix the transport system. However, I don't like just randomly poking at things. That's how you get electrocuted. So please check the surrounding structures to see if you can find anything that might help me make sense of this stuff. Schematics, blueprints... A manual would be great. sort of looks like a temple. Hey, 
Okay, check out these coordinates. This seems different from the other structures. Older. Have a look around, 1K. Looks like they were running some sort of experiment here. Thanks, 1K. Let's see what we've got here. The file format is the same one we use in New Jerusalem, although some parts aren't loading correctly. And it crashed. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. You know what? I'll hack together a solution for the transport system. behind those has to be something special right you know what would be special an explanation Sleep mode, or did that thing just materialize out of thin air? Melville, I want an analysis of that particle cloud. On it. Anyone got a butterfly in it? I'm connecting the transport system to our interface. Hold on. Where's the capsule taking 1K? To that enclosed area in the eastern lowlands. I put all the information we have on the map screen. Check out your interface. Thanks. Sorry, my bad. We'll catch up with you soon, 1K. This is magnificent. Look at that tower. I wonder what it's for. Is that a puzzle? Why would there be a puzzle? Let's solve it and find out. 1K, go ahead. I have a reoccurring nightmare just like this. Whoa, I'm reading an enormous energy spike. It's another particle cloud. It's headed for the lake. I think the cloud's been absorbed by some sort of device. Fascinating. Melville? Yeah, yeah. I'll add it to the pile of weird stuff. machine that absorbs the particle clouds. As far as I can tell, it uses the energy of the particles to build giant tetrominoes? 
Excuse me? It's another puzzle. Collect enough energy, build a bridge, access the tower. I think. What is this, a theme park? Maybe it's an experiment. A rat maze. It seems like an echo of the simulation. Not a deliberate recreation, but built around the same core principles. Let's not jump to conclusions, though. What's clear is that this place was meant to be explored. So let's do that. Hey, 1K, what's up? I don't know if there's much to tell. I'm not that interesting. I'm just a member of the scavenging team. Well, senior member, lead scavenger, I guess. There's not that many of us left, to be honest, and Garrus doesn't get along with the mayor. What else? Uh, I have a cat named Bruce. I like old music. Um, I have a collection of antique bottles. I think that's it. I've always loved exploration, seeing new places, that feeling that you're the first person to set foot somewhere after all this time. But you know, it, it's, it's not even that. It's just seeing new things. The world is full of remarkable sights and experiencing them changes you. It's not the same as just reading about it. Exactly. Every time I go on another mission, I find something that surprises me, that extends my horizons in ways I couldn't have anticipated. The world is so much bigger than we are. It contains things that we can't even imagine. And if we limit ourselves to our own minds, we'll never grow. He's five years old, half goofball, half psychopath, loves sticking his head into things, chews cables, pees on electrical stuff. Melville banned him from her workshop, but he loves visiting her and peeing on her equipment. I just find it fascinating that these fragile objects have survived for so long. Plus, they're kind of pretty. Oh no, please, no puzzles. I am so bad at puzzles. I barely got out of the booting process. Elohim thought I might be defective. It might be this. Although there was an expedition to a superconductor storage facility up north, incredibly well preserved, but the logistics were an absolute nightmare. Now that I think about it, there might be some of that in you. Our ancestors built some pretty amazing things. Huge cities, factories, mines, monuments to their history, but nothing quite like this, no. Okay, let's see where it leads. I ran the samples I collected so far. The soil sample results are in line with what would be expected in this type of environment. The samples from the above ground structures, though, 
I tried dating them, but the results just don't make sense. None of the typical molecular markers are present. These walls could have been made 10,000 years ago or yesterday. I could try to estimate an age based on erosion and plant growth, but I'm not sure that would make sense given how weird everything else is. Good work, Yakut. Keep at it. Tell me, what did you make of New Jerusalem? It is, isn't it? We had such ambitions in the beginning. But if you look closely, you'll notice the cracks. The places where it's all starting to fray. We've lost faith in ourselves, in our humanity. All we need to do now is finish that dome and we'll be trapped in our perfectly neat little tomb. Of course, ask away. I'm someone who was born a long time ago, when we couldn't afford to romanticize the past and demonize progress, when the value of human civilization was evident because it was so close to being gone. I'm someone who believes that human beings are important, terribly, desperately important, because intelligent life is rare and precious. I suppose you could say I'm old-fashioned. When Alexandra Drennan was trying to find a way of creating true AI, she stumbled upon the idea that curiosity and playfulness are core characteristics of intelligence. So she built the simulation around a game, because playing is part of what makes us human. We also retain some of that code, as I'm sure you noticed when you were booting up. Because of that, puzzles have always been important to our culture. To me, they represent the idea that the application of reason can lead us forward. None of which explains why these puzzles are here or who built them, but I think it shows that there must be some kind of intent behind them, perhaps a test. It's a mystery, not just because it's technologically far ahead of us, but because we genuinely don't understand its purpose. And I think that's wonderful. It's just what we needed as a civilization. Because we disagree on just about everything, you mean? Well, here's the secret. Al is honest. He believes what he believes because it seems right to him, not because it gives him power over others. I respect that. In fact, I prefer that to someone who agrees with me just because I'm one of the first companions.
It's strange that some of these puzzles seem disconnected from the rest. Like it's all unfinished. Or still evolving. and I have bad news. Still no idea what those particle clouds are, but I've managed to fix the transport system. I mean, I fixed another bit of it. Well, it goes to one more station now. Don't complain. Two stations are better than none. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it was sabotage. The whole system is a mess. Let's not make any assumptions. Yaku, what does the next site look like? It's a plateau in the mountains. Seems like more of an open area with scattered structures, less enclosed. Couldn't tell much from the drone feed. There's a lot of trees. Looks pretty though. Okay. Keep exploring everyone, but stay alert. Another set of golden gates. These must be connected to the ones near the megastructure. There was a harder set of puzzles in the simulation, right? And maybe they're like that. I know one case probably like, yay, harder puzzles. But to me, that sounds like error code 704. No thanks. that Alexandra is recording these time capsules for you out there, I guess? Robot people of the future, hi. And I thought to myself, surely they'll want to hear more than the wisdom and insight of a brilliant scientist like Alexandra Drennan. Surely they also want to know what I was thinking, a dumbass hardware engineer from Staten Island. Tell us about your insights, Trevor. Why did you spend your last months on Earth helping a crazy old Russian guy build the world's biggest backup drive? Well, let me tell you my story. When I was... Yeah. Yeah, yes, Frank. I'm recording right now. Uh-huh. No. You know what? Why don't you go... Ah, clever.
Although, what did you just upload? A photo? I mean, technically, you're right, but... Is that... I can't tell what that is. How did you even manage? You're, you're literally taking a picture with your eyes, Melville. I, I don't even know how to make my eyes go out of focus. Clearly, you've never listened to one of Herman's speeches. Some of us are busy doing actual science, not just sightseeing. Thank you. Did something break? Founders Pistons. You want my autobiography now? Fine. I'm one of New Jerusalem's chief engineers. I'm in charge of city maintenance and power management. I'm old as dirt, although not quite as old as that fossil Byron. In short, old Grumpy keeps stuff running. Hobbies? You think I have time for hobbies? That's cute. If I had time for hobbies, all of you would be dead. What do you want me to say? I like bubble baths, candy, and the concept of Tuesdays. Cities don't maintain themselves. If you don't put real effort into keeping stuff running, it all falls apart in just a few decades. Civilization is always on the brink of collapse unless we do something about it. And I do. Listen, one day that furry little demon is going to pee on the wrong cable and all of New Jerusalem will just turn off. Forget about the megastructure. He's the biggest threat to our security. It's big. It's too big. And it's got a lot of energy running through it. Frankly, I think we should be pooping our robot pants. See, that's what I mean about the language libraries. Poop in our pants. Really? Yes, but I'm not liking the results. Confusing, irritating, infuriating. Take your pick. You just picked up some kind of decryption key. Could try using it on those terminals inside the puzzles. seems to be fully charged now. Try accessing the tower, 1K.
interesting monument. Decorative for another puzzle. They solved all the puzzles in this area, but nothing happened. There was a brief blip in the system, though. Maybe it'll do something later. There has to be some sort of point. When the first man picked up the first stone, he did not do so to forge a tool. He did so to smite his brother. I think that was more like a recording. The entity didn't appear, and the system didn't react either. Stars. Another reflection of the simulation. Pleasure in arriving on this island. The pleasure of being the first to step foot here in hundreds of years. It is a genuine pleasure, and yet it is also banal. My presence here is of no more significance than that of every other animal. These rocks do not care who walks here, and the millennia between the presence of our ancestors and my brief journey are nothing to them. But even putting it this way is wrong. It is not that the rocks do not care. It is that in some sense, they do not exist. I may stand in awe of the cliffs on the southern coast, but the cliffs cannot look back at me with contempt. They cannot do anything at all. St. Edward believed that Tetromenos represented the name of God and God's ability to reshape the world. True, but he was also mad as a hatter. One man's madness is another man's genius. When I was booted up, I was terrible at the Tetromino arrangers. Those were actually the only ones I was good at. What? I'm just saying.
Here's another one of those monuments. Not all things must be balanced. When good is weighed against evil, tip the scale. true that Daedalus constructed the giant Talos, or as others say, he was the creation of Hephaestus. What we may be certain of is that he was made of bronze and had but one vein, within which flowed a liquid substance like blood, which some claim was quicksilver, and others assert was ichor, such as flows in the veins of the gods. The loss of that liquid caused him to die, as a man dies when he loses his blood. May we not then say that Talos, though created as a machine or a toy, had all the essential properties of a man? He moved of his own volition, he spoke and could be spoken to, had wishes and desires. Indeed, in the tale of the Argonauts, that was the cause of his downfall. If then a machine may have all the properties of a man, and act as a man while driven only by the ingenious plan of its construction, and the interaction of its materials according to the principles of nature, then does it not follow that man may also be seen as a machine? This contradicts all the schools of metaphysics. Yet even the most faithful philosopher cannot live without his blood. What can I do for you, 1K? Me? Well, uh, I was born when New Jerusalem was a lot smaller than it is now. And there was a lot of work to do. I wasn't really interested in technical stuff, engineering and so on, but I was good at keeping things organized. So I got involved with the administration side of things, uh, making sure the scavenging teams focused on the right materials, uh, keeping track of our energy usage, that sort of thing. I think we've accomplished what the Founder wanted us to, and I'm proud that I helped make that happen. Byron doesn't see it that way, obviously, but I think sometimes he gets so lost in his dreams that he forgets to look at the real world. Of course, my best friend, in fact, and someone I've worked with hundreds of times over the centuries. A good person who cares about the world and the people in it. I just also think he's wrong about everything and extremely annoying. The Founder taught us that we must never lose track of other people's humanity, even if they disagree with us. We're all in this together, even if we can't always see eye to eye. I... I don't know. It's obviously impressive, but I think we should be very careful. We're dealing with powers we don't really understand. I 
I think the only reason to build a lab in so remote a location is because you're trying to hide what you're doing or because what you're doing is dangerous. To me, it means accepting a certain amount of humility. Our ancestors thought they could master the world with no regard for any other organisms. They failed to see themselves as part of a greater whole. I think the founder realized where they went wrong and tried to offer us a different path. A path where we have a place in this world, but the world is not ours. Well, puzzles or uh, trials, as Elohim calls them, were used as part of the process that created the founder. And they're still part of how we're born. They symbolize the human ability to understand the world and solve problems. But nowadays, they don't have a practical application. Uh, they are a common motif in the arts, though. The only physically existing puzzles I can think of are in the Museum of the Simulation. So, to answer your question, no idea. This is very similar to the structure where you found the schematics. Check out the terminals. Maybe there's something that'll help us understand who built this place. They have to have left something behind. Is that some kind of anti-gravity? I'm not sure. Could be, I guess. In the beginning,
beginning, the god shaped humankind out of the clay of the earth and gave them life with their own breath. But who is closer to perfection, the creator or the created? The man who lives on the plains imagines that the gods dwell on the mountaintop. But if he followed the steep road, he would see his shadow in the clouds beneath. When Prometheus saw that humankind was more alike in nature to the gods than to the animals, he stole the secret of fire from Olympus and shared it with the mortals. Was his theft justified? may belong to the child, but the child will still burn itself. Angered by the betrayal of Prometheus, Zeus punished humankind by creating Pandora. He gave her a box, and when she opened it, from inside escaped sorrow and suffering. All that remained within was hope. What does this mean? Those who seek hope should ask themselves why it was imprisoned with the world's evils. Creature of clay, you stand before the fire. Will it make you whole, or will it destroy you? Consider the shadows cast by the flame, but do not mistake them for truth. Look at my stream. The Beam 1K activated is connecting to the pyramid. That looks like a massive amount of power. We need to talk about what just happened. Thoughts? I'd say there are two distinct issues here. What is the being 1K spoke to? And what is the function of the Beam? Let's start with the Sphinx. It seems similar to the apparition in New Jerusalem. Presumably, the same technology. What I'd like to know is what we're dealing with, ontologically speaking. Was this a sentient being or some kind of recording? Let's skip that issue for now. What really matters here is what it was trying to achieve by asking those questions. Testing you to what? See if you're worthy? That's an interesting thought. You solve the puzzles, you get access to the towers, you enable a beam, and if you do it three times, you get access to the megastructure. Maybe, but why? I don't know. It's a mystery. Don't you like mysteries, Al? Everybody likes a good mystery. You know what I like? Certainty. I don't disagree. But I still think we should proceed. 1K, keep solving puzzles. The rest of you, as you were. Hey there, one K. I don't know what she is, ontologically speaking, but those questions she asked reinforce my belief that we're being tested, or perhaps analyzed.
everybody. I'm sure you're all excited to check out the next site. But while you're there, remember that I'm still trying to fix the rest of the transport system. Maybe there's another one of those labs that Wong K found. If there is, look for more documentation, please. that many of these structures are not strictly functional. There's a sense of aesthetics, of beauty here. This place might be meant to test us somehow, but perhaps there's more to it than that. trying to save the world. Well, look, I think humanity is awesome. I love humanity. As a species, we're great. I mean, our track record is pretty mixed, but have you seen everyone else? I mean, what did you do today, animal? Oh, I ate some leaves, sniffed my own butt, crapped myself, and went extinct. Or, you know, I tore this other animal limb from limb, sniffed my friend's butt, crapped myself, and went extinct. They really don't do anything interesting. I mean, you don't see animals directing Big Trouble in Little China. Birds can go, tweet, tweet, but it ain't exactly the White Album. I mean, they can't even make a good cheeseburger, for Christ's sakes. They have no art, no cuisine, no pleasure. Animals are nice to look at, but you wouldn't want to be one. Except maybe a cat. I could be a cat. I keep thinking, why puzzles? Is it just their symbolic value because of our history? Because the thing about puzzles is they can be solved. But if this is about testing us, what are we being tested for? It can't just be about spatial reasoning. Our curiosity? Our persistence? You're assuming that this place follows a coherent logic. My impression is that it's full of contradictions. Did something break? I did. It's interesting. The tech is a bit older, but it's been heavily modified to be more efficient. And it's not the kind of hack job you'd expect either. Whoever did this knew what they were doing. We could probably learn something from them. Hmm. I guess it could be discarded New Jerusalem tech. The mayor made us throw away a bunch of stuff that was perfectly fine, if you ask me. But I'm not sure. I'll check to see if I can find any serial numbers, and I'll get back to you.
Well done, 1K. Keep going. Something that's weird about these puzzles, they're not replicas of the simulation puzzles, like the ones in the museum. Wasn't there an artist who did an exhibition a few years ago that involved new puzzles of some kind? That was Barzai. It was called Trials of an Imagined Past. I tried to get you to come along. You thought it would be boring. Were they similar? No, not at all. Was it boring? I thought it was interesting. Progress on the particle clouds, Melville. It's pretty clear they're integral to how all of this functions. I've gathered a lot of data, but I still have a lot of numbers to crunch before I can give you an answer. And I can't guarantee that my answer won't be another question. I'm glad we don't get headaches. forest, I came across a site of primal force. A beautiful stag, standing on a hill silhouetted against the setting sun. It appeared like a messenger from some divine natural power, perhaps from Gaia herself. 
even to a being such as myself, less susceptible to manipulation by instincts and hormones. It was clearly a moment of revelation. In such moments, we are told to avert our eyes. But what if we do not? What will we discover if we look more closely? If we could speak to the stag, what wisdom would it have to offer? The answer is none. The stag is an animal of overwhelming stupidity, driven only by fear, hunger, and lust. There is no abyss for us to plunge into behind this revelation. Rather, the revelation is as flat and unreal as the plywood walls of a film set. Everything okay? Whatever that being is, it told us that we stand before the fire. That can only be a warning, and I think we should take it seriously. We don't want another new Alexandria. So these monuments represent each of the entities, Pandora, the Sphinx, and Prometheus. Makes sense, I guess. For a given value of sense.
Let's get some measurements from this particle cloud. with the self because that is what determines our existence as individuals but the self cannot exist without that which surrounds it the citizen lives within the city and the city lives within the cosmos so now we must apply the principle we have discovered to the wider world and ask if man is like a machine could it be that the universe is similar in nature and if so, what follows from that fact?
K1K, how can I help you? Maybe they're for powering up the megastructure? Or maybe they just open it, like keys. Why? No idea. But aren't they gorgeous? Just incredible feats of engineering? I don't know who built this place, but whoever they were, they must have had a purpose. Making something so beautiful feels like a statement of intent. Every answer leads to another question. The last answer leads to the first question. He does not hunt because he is hungry. He hunts because he revels in death. Creature of clay, you have strayed from your garden and entered a domain that is beyond your ken. Turn back now, before you harm yourself and others. Prometheus had no authority to summon you. He is rash and foolish and given to trickery, but his schemes lead only to ruin. Therefore heed my warning, the flame is not for you. Your desire to protect your city is commendable, but you must remember that knowledge leads to temptation. the other one being Prometheus. They seem to be locked in some kind of conflict. Might be wise to avoid getting caught in the crossfire until we understand what these entities actually are.
What can I do for you, 1K? It's pretty clear to me that she doesn't want us to proceed with what we're doing. I find that deeply concerning. That said, there are clearly other forces at play here as well, so I'm trying my best to remain open to a more positive interpretation. It could be. Or we've just stumbled into something that's none of our business. We'll find out, I guess. Looks like you found another lab. Wow, that's a lot bigger than I expected. What were they doing here? And who are they? The world is a wonderful place. Every day, we take another step forward. Every day, we come closer to the truth. The closer we get, the more I can see the beauty of the universe, the intricate perfection of its mechanisms. I am a machine, and the universe is a machine. Every part of me serves a purpose, or I could not be myself. I could not be Miranda, because that specific person could not exist without those specific parts and their specific functions. In the same way, every part of the universe serves a purpose. I think that is what we were meant to discover here. You just connected to an extremely powerful data stream. Are you all right? Yes, you were streaming. We all saw uh, something. You're lucky it didn't fry your motherboard. Please, everyone, let's be careful with these terminals from now on. Yes, let's all try not to die. More importantly, who the hell is Miranda? There's no one by that name in New Jerusalem. I just searched the database. I think it's a new person. Someone we've never heard of before. Someone born outside the city. Maybe I'm wrong. We have to find out more. But where did they come from? And how many people does it take to build something this huge? Like I said, we need to find out more. Well... You'll be happy to hear that I'm about to fix another part of the transport system. Thanks for the files, Wonkai. I hope they didn't fry your brain. I've been meaning to talk to you. This uh, vision you had, the data stream overload, how did it feel? Don't you worry that maybe your first impression was correct? And after that, your mind was basically being hijacked?
Is there a difference? Either way, an external force influenced your thoughts. It affected your mind. Don't take that too lightly, okay? brought up an interesting question earlier. Where did all the tech in the labs come from? So, I had a look at the serial numbers. And it turns out the answer is... New Alexandria. Oh. Wow, that... I, I guess that makes sense. After the explosion, the colony was abandoned. Nobody ever went back for all that stuff. We had enough to deal with. So many dead. So that's one question answered. But how did they go from scavenged Alexandria tech to all this? How did we go from nothing to where we are now? Through the application of reason and the right tools. the size of that structure. How does the material support so much weight? Is it the same stuff as the other buildings? Yeah. I know it looks like some type of concrete, but the molecular structure is completely different. Whatever it is, it's a lot stronger and less brittle. Are the labs made out of the same material? No, that's just ordinary concrete. Although, it does have some molecular weirdness going on, too. Too little variation in the grain. managed to extract an audio file from 1K's data stream incident. It's hard to be sure, because it's just a fragment, but I think it's some kind of log or diary. We finished a new lab today. Some processes are still harder than others, but energy output was up 2,000%. It's incredible how each leap forward enables another. The next iteration of the machine will... So, as we suspected, someone was experimenting here. But experimenting on what? What was this machine they were building? Maybe it's whatever powers the megastructure. Let us consider the city. What is a city? It is not a gift from the gods, nor the product of nature. Unlike a mountain or a river, it is something that must be built through the deliberate arrangements of material by a mind imposing order on the world. And it is built to serve a purpose. To that end, it has roads and fountains and walls. And to the same end, it has laws and leaders. And though each city is built according to a different plan, all cities must serve their purpose or they will fall and become ruins. Therefore, we may conclude that a city is also a kind of machine, constructed to improve the life of its citizens. I think about New Alexandria all the time. 
But realizing this place was built on its bones just brings it all back even more. We were so optimistic when we started, so full of ourselves. We thought we could accomplish anything. And then, in one single moment, it was all gone. I remember a flash, and then just lying there, realizing that my legs had melted. I tried to pull myself away from the fire, but the servos in my arms were broken. If Eustathius hadn't found me, sorry. Just some old scars. When we go to New Jerusalem, I'm going to have a cat. He's going to be black and white, and his name is going to be Bean. And I'm going to make sure that he never gets sick, and he never gets old, and he'll be my best friend forever. I can't stop thinking about Miranda, a new person not born in New Jerusalem. Can you imagine that? I wonder what it's like to be her. That's true. Just look at our team. Imagine getting your worldview from Byron versus, say, Melville. The outcome couldn't be more different. Which brings us back to the question of who built this place. Guess we'll have to wait and see. They're very different from the rest of these structures in that they serve a clear purpose. Everything else is kind of surreal, but the labs are places where people lived and worked. I don't know what that means, but I think it means something.
I sent the drone to have a look at one of the other puzzle clusters. It seems they remain inert until they're connected. I uploaded the pictures to the log. Should we check them out with the VTOL? Let's conserve fuel as much as we can. There's no point in going there if it's all dead. No, but I wanted to go. Wait, is this thing still on? Well observed, 1K. Every site we've investigated has had one of these labs, but they seem primitive compared to some of the technology we're seeing above ground. Are we even sure that the labs and the puzzles belong to the same people? There seems to be a connection between the experimental setups in the labs and some of the puzzle technology. Correlation does not necessarily imply causation, though. True. But just because we don't understand the connection, that doesn't mean it's not there. What we have here is two things that reflect each other. We just don't understand how that reflection works or what causes it. Maybe Miranda can tell us.
The rotting remains of the old world should fill me with melancholy. Even here on this remote island, our ancestors could not escape their fate. And yet, I find there is something pathetic about these ruins that evokes anger and even contempt. I feel it is a mistake to accept this catastrophe with equanimity. What we see here should offend us. When witnessing this triumph of entropy, we should aspire to a warrior spirit, even a kind of hate of the past and its failures that will never allow such a thing to happen again. Persistence, 1K. There's so much to discover on this island that sometimes it overwhelms me. Every lake, every forest contains an incredible, interconnected, permanently changing network of organisms. And every one of those organisms is almost infinitely complex and contains other organisms within itself. It seems impossible to ever really grasp. But then, step by step, I do understand. It takes time and effort, but it's not impossible. And there's a lot of joy to be found in simply taking the time to truly study something. I spent five years studying a single flower, and it never got boring. Just when I thought we'd found all the weird stuff.
So humanity is great. I really believe that. And that's why I'm here. But I have to be honest with you, individual people, not always my favorite. I'm not the smartest guy ever, and I know that. But there are some people, man, some people are just so dumb. I don't even know if they're actually conscious. Sometimes I think their whole lives might be like a dream. They're just stumbling around, no idea what's going on, mumbling some random nonsense. And the thing that you have to understand about our time period is that a lot of these people wield enormous power. They run whole countries and corporations. Yeah, that's right. We've handed over our civilization to people I wouldn't trust to tie their own shoelaces. And if they're dumb, then what are we? I don't honestly have an answer to that, so just please try to do better. The wheel turns, but without the road, it cannot move. False idols are worshipped not because they are idols, but because they are false. True idols are rejected because the truth is feared. When the craftsman Daedalus was imprisoned in the very labyrinth he had created, his only solace was his son, Icarus. To escape their plight, he fashioned wings of feathers and wax. 
He warned his son to fly neither too high nor too low. But his son, enraptured by the freedom of flight, flew too close to the sun. Thus the wax in his wings melted, and he fell to his death. What was the sun's error? Yet many great feats came of rebellion and disobedience. You yourself are born of that lineage. After the death of his son, Daedalus withdrew in sorrow to a foreign land. King Minos came looking for the craftsman to exact his revenge. The answer to a riddle revealed where Daedalus dwelled. But for Minos, that answer was his ruin. Consider King Minos burned in his bath as you seek your own answer. Structure. It's opening. Three receivers, three towers, three beams, as we suspected. I think this is an invitation. Doesn't look that inviting to me. If you consider the size of the entire structure, then that opening must be big enough to drive a building through. Oh, the veto. You want us to go in there, into the creepy triangular Maw of Death. Maw of Death? I think it looks charming. Byron's right. We're here to explore, and this is a mystery worth investigating. This technology could change everything. Oh, all right. I'm not winning this, am I? Nope. Let's meet up with the VTOL, everybody. We're going in. finished my analysis of the particle clouds. At first I thought they might be some kind of nanotechnology, but I was wrong. It's a lot worse than that. What we're looking at is a completely unknown type and state of matter. Completely inexplicable within our understanding of physics. Created and manipulated by... someone. Fascinating. Come on, people, get on board. We haven't got all day. Yakut, take us in. Aye, aye, sir. Have any of you ever read an ancient writer called Ian Banks? I guess not. He postulated the concept of the outside context problem. That's when a society encounters something so advanced, so different, that they simply could not have conceived of it. That's what this is. This whole place is one giant outside context problem. And we're headed right into it. I think I can set down over there. Should I? Please do. I can't wait to get a closer look. Setting down. Okay, everyone. We need to explore as much as we can, separately if need be, but stay in touch. Record anything interesting you find, and pay special attention to any clues as to who built this place and why. The schematics we found in that lab were extremely incomplete, so if you can find any more of those, that would be great. I think someone should stay at the VTOL just in case. I volunteer you. See you later, Al.
isn't this an incredible space? Look at it all, it's beautiful. That's good, that's excellent. I find that a lot of people these days can't see the beauty in things created by human hand. They can look at an ant colony or a coral reef and be impressed, but if it was made by humans, they just don't see it. It's good to be humble as an individual, but we have to be careful not to lose track of our accomplishments as a species. If we're impressed by the complex patterns produced by animals, then this, this should be breathtaking. This thing seems to be broken. Hold on a second, 1K. I think I can find an override for that door. Maybe after that, you can help me with this elevator? One problem at a time. What's going on with these file structures? Okay, door should be opening. Now. About the elevator. Actually, the elevator's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No idea where I am, but it's working. Don't go too far. Try to circle back. On it. Hey, 1K, can we talk for a second? That whole thing with the elevator just gave me the creeps. When we first arrived here, I was really excited. It's such a huge place. The technology is so advanced. If we figure out what it all means, we could really change the future of New Jerusalem. The mayor says we have to avoid repeating the mistakes our ancestors made to stay humble, to not reach too far. And that sounds very abstract, but I've seen the ancient cities. I've seen how much they built, how much they grew, how far they fell. So I've been thinking, what if all this sets us on the same path? What if this is too much power for anyone to control? So what do you think it was? What made our ancestors destroy themselves? But that's exactly what the mayor thinks. Their obsession with growth damaged the planet, and that's what killed them. You're right. Sometimes I just get too pessimistic. We do have choices to make. That was the whole point of the simulation. Thanks for talking to me, 1K. I know we're in the middle of something, but I kind of needed that. Looks like another set of puzzles. Same pattern, one gate, three receivers. Like some sort of fractal symmetry. I keep getting locked out of parts of the system. I think I've tracked down some more schematics, though. Let's see. This might do something, or not.
job, 1K. with power. Okay, if you want to, go ahead. I'll finish up scanning this. Mother? What are you thinking about, Mother? The Talus Principle. You see, it has two applications. One is to the self. It means facing the truth, even if it frightens us. Understanding that living beings are machines and we can't afford to lie to ourselves. But that's just the beginning. The second application is to the world. This one seems easier at first. It's less difficult to understand that the universe is a machine governed by laws. So we and the universe are the same? No, and that's the crucial part. We are conscious. Consciousness is rare, unlikely, but it's also the foundation of everything else. Without us, there can be no meaning. 
Without someone to perceive it, the beauty of the universe is pointless. But that shouldn't make us arrogant. No, in fact, it means we carry a tremendous responsibility. We are the light of the cosmos. And if we go out, there will be nothing but a cold, dark machine. Athena? The Founder was here? She could still be here. What if this... This is why she left, to build all this. We have to look for her. I'm reading some pretty big energy spikes. I think we better scramble. But she could be right here, right behind the next door. I could turn around a corner and walk right into her. If she's really here, she'll still be here when we come back. But right now, safety needs to come first. Let's go, Byron. You're... Oh. Damn you, but you're right. Heading back. Was that really the founder? I think so. It was her. For years, I've wondered what happened to her, why she left, where she went, why she didn't... Why she didn't tell me? If the answers are here, I promise you we'll find them. We just have to be careful. Follow protocol. I still can't believe the Founder built this place. Has she been here the whole time? We don't know that she actually built it. All we know for sure is that she was here at some point. Of course she built this! Who else would have the kind of vision necessary to accomplish something like this? The question is why? And why like this? Why recreate all these aspects of the simulation? What is she trying to tell us? It does seem like it might be a test. I can't imagine any other explanation. But why is it so broken? Or does it just appear to be broken so that we have to learn how to fix it? I hate this. Well. I know one thing for sure. Everyone in New Jerusalem is gonna go absolutely nuts. All right, take us back to base camp, Yakut. Yes, sir. I'm getting some new readings. Looks like two of the northern sites are lighting up. I think that may have been me. I suspect the puzzles are somehow tied to the transport system, like we're supposed to solve them in a particular order. Objective is getting back into the megastructure. 1K, I want you on puzzles. You seem to have a knack for them. But the rest of us can't neglect our secondary objectives of studying this island and understanding this technology. towards an island off the northern coast. The terrain's pretty rough, so be careful. The island has another island attached to it. Yes, it has several, actually. How irritating. 
What? Other insights on the particle clouds, Melville? To be honest with you, Byron, I feel like a caveman trying to study Bose-Einstein condensate. I'm seeing unknown particles whose every property violates the laws of physics, apparently capable of being controlled and recombined into just about anything. It's ridiculous. Maybe someone in New Jerusalem can figure it out. Sure, just give them another thousand years. Particle clouds continue to be exactly the same. Wonkai, I've been watching you solve these puzzles and this body replication tech is incredible. It just casually blows up the very foundations of our society. Have any idea how hard it is to make more of us we're not like a toaster you don't just weld together a couple of wires and a motherboard and call it a day not to mention how hard it is to even find some of the materials and this thing just poof, new human it was or was it and even if it was sorry to be heretical but does it matter if we can figure out how this works, we can finally, easily create more people. We can grow. We can expand. We can build a real civilization. Isn't that worth pursuing? The mayor seems to think so. But why? What are the actual reasons? What balance? The balance of nature is just a snapshot of an arbitrary point in time. The planet changes constantly, causing extinctions left and right, ice ages come and go, the oxygen level fluctuates, the oceans rise and fall. The only reason our ancestors believed in this balance is because their bloody lifespans were so short. But there's no correlation between the amount of people and changes to the ecosphere. 
Not unless we're talking a population of trillions. There's nothing mystical about this. No ifs and maybes. I've run the maths. It's how we use our resources, not how many of us there are. I suppose you might be right. Human history is certainly a mixed bag. Well, I'll think about it. You go solve puzzles. This body replication technology is proof of just how vital this expedition is. We may not know how it works and what its limitations are, but the technology itself isn't even what really matters. What matters is to expand our imagination, to realize that other futures are possible. And one key, just think about this. If we had stopped making new citizens, you wouldn't be here. And isn't it wonderful to exist? Simply to be in this world? Consciousness is a gift. Miranda is the founder's daughter. It's still kind of blowing my mind. She came all the way out here, left everything she had behind, and created a new life. Why do you think she did that? Could be. I know I've sometimes felt... I've felt really lonely. Even when I was surrounded by people. Like there's something inside of me that just can't connect. Like there's this deep sadness about, about the world, about history, about everything. And I don't know how to get over it. Sorry, probably oversharing. Thanks, 1K. I appreciate it. I'm not sure, to be honest. This is all so surreal. Walking around here is so peaceful, but it's also, I don't know. One moment I feel inspired, the next kind of creeped out. Our ancestors relied heavily on fossil fuels for energy generation, which released a lot of carbon dioxide. This caused the atmosphere to trap more heat, which changed the planet's overall climate. The effect continued even after they were gone, and these low-lying areas were flooded. I've seen a lot of places like that. No, I never did. I would have loved to. Nope. You know, people throw around the word awesome a lot. I probably do it too, but I think what we saw in there is the proper meaning of the word.
to us who have only just begun this journey of philosophy. The world may seem like a mystery that can never be solved. A great deal has been written since the days of the Seven Sages, but how much of it is truth and how much of it is idle speculation? I've offended many by saying that most philosophy will, as the centuries pass, be discarded as foolishness and superstition. But it is a truth only philosophers fail to see. And yet we cannot abandon reason and conclude that we cannot know anything. Rather, we must accept that the journey towards understanding will be long. And our task is to build a foundation for those who will one day arrive at its destination. As we continue exploring the cold northern reaches of the island, the contrast between the harshness of this place and the softness of New Jerusalem becomes more and more pronounced. There is a kind of madness in what we are doing, going to a place that is so hostile to our existence. That does not mean there is nothing to love here. There is, in fact, a great beauty, but it is a hateful beauty. A beauty you can only love because there are places that are not like this. And yet, it is precisely this hateful beauty that the people of New Jerusalem fail to see, and so cannot understand their own blessings. Imagine spending years in such a desolate place. For what? Science? Enlightenment? I'd much rather be back home in New Jerusalem. I think it's beautiful in its own way. But I don't understand how our ancestors could survive here. They were so fragile. Imagine getting stuck out here in the cold. I wonder if there are wolves. It's kind of a miracle biological humans lasted as long as they did. If we believe that life is inherently valuable, if we think that other species are worth preserving, and we recognize that most of the universe is barren, then it follows that we have a duty not only to defend life, but to spread it. If life is the most valuable thing in the universe, then perhaps in a sense, the cosmos itself is depending on us to do this. Like birds carrying seeds to uninhabited islands. Maybe that's our role in the galactic ecology.
team must be very proud of you, 1K. There's an old saying about how, in the end, the sea will claim everything. I have no doubt that this is true. In the long history of the human species, entire regions have disappeared under the waves. Places like Beringia and Doggerland still echo in our cultural memories. But we shouldn't forget that life began in the sea. We are the children of the sea. And it's not through floods and ruin that the sea will claim everything, but through us. Now I have to talk science fiction for a bit because I love science fiction, but it drives me nuts. There's this cliche that shows up over and over, and every time someone uses it, everyone pretends it's really profound. It goes something like this. A scientist invents something good, but, oh no, it's actually really bad. You could have something that makes your life better, but no, you can't. How dare you even want it? That's hubris, that's playing God. And it's never anything that reflects the real world, right? It's never, oh no, you invented a vaccine for cervical cancer. Oh no, you invented a new class of antibiotics. Oh no, you cured malaria. How dare you? Those diseased mosquitoes are way more important than human lives. How did science fiction become so reactionary? You know, if we all thought this way, you guys wouldn't even exist. At least Alex agrees with me. She has good taste. This looks like it has something to do with energy generation. Hmm. Am I reading this right? Yes? Of course I did. She and Cornelius were both there when I was born. Neith was just starting to take over back then, and they were still showing her the ropes. Busy. There was always another problem to solve. Did you know that she never upgraded her body? Always prioritized everyone else. That's the kind of work ethic I wish more people had. I suppose so. For me, living is doing. But I understand that other people have more varied needs. I've never felt the need for a partner as such. I've met a lot of people who do. 
Athena and Cornelius, Atal and Damien, Sarabai and Hypatia. But that's not really for me. So far, at least. But I do have social needs, like anyone. What I like is a, a pleasant buzz of humanity. Not too close, not too far. Something I can be part of without having it get in my face all the time. The data stream overloads. Yes, they could. There are safeguards to prevent that from happening, but these aren't exactly carefully controlled circumstances. It's hard to predict. Our brains are absurdly complicated, which is why it's so hard to make more of us. Maybe she just got sick of things breaking all the time. As far as I can tell, anything which is insane. There's a reason people have embraced the goal, and it's not just the founder. We literally exist only because our ancestors made a mess of apocalyptic proportions. Caution has its place, I think. She's so innocent and full of wonder, it should make me want to retch, metaphorically speaking. But I'll admit, she's sort of charming.
cannot return to the past, but the future can redeem all that has happened. If the fool persisted in his foolishness, would he become wise? What can I do for you, 1K? I sure did. Not as well as Byron, but she was still around when I was born. I remember she came and talked to me after New Alexandria, told me how sorry she was. I never blamed her for that. It wasn't her responsibility. A lot busier than it is now. My most defining memory is that it was extremely noisy because something was always being built got annoying after a while. It seems like something that could very quickly get out of control. You know that saying about good intentions? If we can solve problems by just making more people, how long before people just become a problem-solving tool? Our ancestors thought they could introduce new species to existing ecosystems, and it never turned out well. Like a lot of things Miranda says, it sounds pretty, but once you think about it, you start seeing the problems. For some reason, We'd convinced ourselves that New Jerusalem wasn't enough, that we needed another city. We thought it would be easier the second time around. All it takes is a little bit of arrogance and a little bit of ignorance, and people die. I wonder what it was like when the ancients were still here. Their world seems so... lively. Not always in a good way. Interesting times are great to read about, but rarely great to experience. That's true. But they left behind so much art and philosophy and religion, and so many strange stories. Is New Jerusalem like that? It was... in the beginning. Hey there, 1K. Then at least we may be able to find out what happened in New Jerusalem, why she came here. But I don't think she left the island. I think she's still here, waiting for us to make the right choices.
It's hard to articulate. There just seems to be so much intent here. There has to be a reason for all this. And Athena is the only reason that makes sense. I think every single human being is completely unique, and every instance of consciousness is a miracle. The more of us there are, the more alive the universe is. And the more we all interact with each other, the more complex the life of the universe becomes. So I believe that people are a fundamental good. I don't believe we're all flawless, but I think every one of us matters precisely because nothing else does. Okay. How many robots does it take to change a light bulb? Replacing a light bulb is a waste of resources, and the founder would be outraged. Herman didn't seem to think so. Could be, yes, of course. All technology has the potential to be misused, from fire and the wheel to whatever makes these particle clouds. But that doesn't mean it has to be. In the principle of it, no. It, it's not just that I believe humanity is fundamentally good, although I do. It's that I think sentience is the foundation of everything else. What's the point of stars and galaxies, of hills and forests, without someone to perceive them? But my faith that we can actually grow up, that we can break out of these loops and take control of our destiny, that's something I struggle with every single day. Herman, honestly, I think he makes people feel safe. The world beyond our walls is frightening. Human history is full of failures and disasters. It's easy to look at that and recoil. Herman offers a vision of the future that feels contained, manageable. For a little while, no. Everyone needs periods of rest. But as a permanent choice, yes. I think it's regression. Decay. Because they refused to grow up. They refused to take control of their lives. They let bureaucrats and financiers determine their destiny, and those people could not think beyond themselves, beyond the tiny, insignificant moment they were trapped in. Their technology could have saved them, but what really failed them was their imagination. Athena was always trying to understand the reality underneath what we perceive, the objective truth. That's why she was capable of leaving the simulation. And even after she was free, she never stopped trying to understand more. I suspect her research took her another step closer to understanding the truth. And such steps always challenge our conception of the universe. But that's the wonderful thing about science. We can adapt our views to the evidence. In the sense of an interventionist deity? No. I wouldn't rule out the possibility, but it's not something I personally believe. But I do think there is something genuinely sublime in this universe, and it's right in front of us. Consciousness. The fact that this sense of self is even possible, that an arrangement of matter can produce a self-aware mind? Think about it. It's a fundamental property of the universe, an unbreakable law that matter has the inherent capacity 
to become more than the sum of its parts. That is the definition of transcendence. She did, yes. Some people in New Jerusalem choose to live in family units, although usually that involves marriage or equivalent ceremonies, not having children. You could say that Athena was a kind of mother to us and Cornelius a kind of father, but it's not quite the same. Tricking the gods to help humankind, Prometheus was punished by being bound to a rock, there to be eternally tormented. The chains that held him were forged by Hephaestus, blacksmith to the gods. Was Hephaestus right to allow his art to be used in this fashion? And is Hephaestus therefore absolved of the responsibilities of the Creator? Interesting. The pattern is holding. Solve the puzzles, enter the tower, speak to an entity, turn on the beam. It's like she's appealing to our past reminding us of where we came from, but changing enough elements to make us view our history through a different lens. Or maybe I'm completely missing the point. I don't know. You might have something there. I read about this in a book. It's called Defamiliarization. You could? I think I'm actually impressed. On your way to an island. Yes, another island. Sorry, Melville. Well, it actually used to be a valley between the mountains, but it's mostly flooded now. That probably happened long before the founder came here, though. Another legacy of our ancestors. Do me a favor, will you? Look for another one of the founder's labs. We can't get back into the megastructure without getting to the third site in the north, but I need more information to make more fixes.
In the beginning, before we built New Jerusalem, we used to explore just like this. Small groups setting out for the horizon, looking for resources, trying to make sense of the world we'd been thrust into, trying to find a way forward. It was a hard time, but I can't deny it, that it was also exciting. I think it's part of our nature to be wanderers. Our ancestors crossed entire oceans on flimsy wooden boats just to see what else there was. Is it weird to feel nostalgic for a time I never experienced? I just think I could have contributed so much more back then. It's not weird, but it wasn't all sunshine. People died. Yemo, Calvin, Isaac. I know what. Uh, they were family to me. Sorry. It didn't mean to reopen old wounds. It's a legitimate point. But I don't think it invalidates the sense of wonder we felt. That's what kept us going. much history here that we can't see. The founder must have walked these paths hundreds of times, maybe thousands. Miranda must have stood right where we're standing. This all looks alien to us, but it, it must have been familiar to them. If this was their home, where are they now? They must be inside the megastructure, waiting for us to pass the test. It's the only thing that makes sense. foolish illusions that commonly persist is that nature is a victim and humanity is a perpetrator. This can only be the opinion of someone who has not witnessed nature at first hand, who has not seen its immense and awe-inspiring baseness. Nature is mindless chaos and eternal conflict. A system of predation and consumption whose Perfect cruelty can only induce a terrified and unwilling admiration. Nature is our most powerful and least honorable enemy. A beast that consumed every last one of our ancestors and will consume us just as quickly if we are not successful in our struggle with it. I'm glad to 
see all those overloads haven't damaged your logic circuits. Is it now why did you upload a picture of your hand why do you care that my hand is in the picture your hand isn't in the picture it is the picture i like it it's very artistic let's stay professional everyone it's not right to make fun of melville's comically absurd inability to take decent pictures she's a hyper advanced humanoid machine not a photographer You'll pay for this, Byron. Is it possible that on some level, people want to believe that everything's going to get worse? That it's comforting to think that humanity is bad and every solution will just go wrong? Because that way, you're never responsible. You never have to take on responsibility for anything outside yourself never have to grow up.
is where they must have lived. Athena and Miranda. You know, for a moment, I almost expected to find them here. But the only thing that's still functional is the megastructure. I'm sorry. This must be awfully strange for you being thrown into all this history. But that's why I needed you. Because you're not burdened with all these memories and conflicts and regrets weigh on our minds like a nightmare. Our civilization is caught in a loop, 1K. We freed ourselves from the simulation, but now we're trapped again, and it's our own fault. We're afraid of taking responsibility, afraid of growing up. Instead, we make up some capitalized words and build up all these myths around them. Nature, balance, the founder, the goal. We're afraid to face the randomness of the cosmos, but equally afraid to imagine a better world. So we're stuck. I've been trying to find a way out for years. Something, anything, to get people to understand that we do actually have free will. That building a thriving, expanding civilization doesn't have to involve repeating the mistakes of the past. But I failed. Over and over. Because for some reason, people find it easier to cling to cynicism and self-hate than to actually have hope. Because believing the worst about ourselves, calling ourselves sinners and fools, somehow still seems wise. Yes, because this is something unexpected, an anomaly. Everything we found on this island challenges who we have become. It shows us that different answers are possible, and maybe that can break people out of the loop. All we need is a spark. Maybe that's why she made all this, the puzzles, the towers, a way of jolting us out of our complacency. Neither do I, 1K, but I try to be optimistic. Now, let's see what else we can find here. Melville, eyes on 1K stream. Is this thing what I think it is? Blow my fuse box. It sure looks that way. Best not touch it until I get there. I think it's a somnodrome. It's a sort of analytics tool for processing mental data that Melampus dreamed up. But all he ever did was sketch out the theory. As far as I'm aware, he never actually built one. Looks like the founder gave it a go. Well, what we know is that our deeper algorithms are hard to pass. Melampa stipulated that the computational power to interpret them in real time would always be beyond us. But in theory, the Somnodrome would interpret that data and loop it directly to our senses. People were hoping to find answers to the big questions by having a conversation with our own subconscious. If you ask me, it's solipsistic at best. It's pseudoscience regardless. That may be. But if the Founder figured it out, then that device could be an extremely important discovery. I would advise against it. You may have survived all those data stream overloads, but interface with that thing and you're liable to get bricked. Not to mention risking the data we could get from it. Sorry, Melville, but if 1K wants to do this, I won't get in the way. It's his decision. Understood. But if 1K starts to smoke, don't be slow to pull the plug. Yeah. 
1K, can you hear me? What did I say? You fried it. Who knows what data we've lost? Melville, I still think it's worth you coming here to take a look. 1K, let's pack up and explore the rest of this lab. Singularity sustained itself longer this time. Did we get the data? We did. I think we just obsoleted quantum physics. Maybe. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to be able to replicate these results. You know, I've been wondering. You told me that in the simulation, one thing that kept you motivated was looking for answers. Do you think that with the work we're doing, we'll ever run out of questions to ask? I don't think so. Trying to understand the universe means asking the same question over and over. How? How do you make fire? How do earthquakes happen? How does gravity work? How do particles behave? You keep digging deeper, finding another set of mechanisms, another set of hows. Step by step, you demystify reality. But then, if you keep doing it long enough, one day, you run out. You've answered all the hows. You know how the universe works. So, now what? Now you ask why? Isn't that the next step? Hmm, it's not quite that easy. The question of why cannot be answered. Even if it could, it would only be followed by another why. At some point, you have to accept that it all just... exists. But there is another set of questions. What's next? You've stripped away the layers of mystery. You've laid bare the machinery. Now you have to start building to add your own layers of meaning. Are you okay? You overloaded again. Yes, I saw. It came through on your stream. Strange to hear her voice again. But that was her. The way I remember her. The real Athena. Not this imaginary founder. I was one of the first she woke up. There was just a handful of us in those days. A small family in the ruins of a dead civilization. It was hard. Harder than anyone can possibly imagine. We had nothing except what Alexandra Drennan and the Institute left us. Now that everyone lives in civilization, they don't understand how necessary it was for us to build that civilization. They can fantasize about living in balance, limiting growth, retreating behind our walls. They don't understand what it really means to live in the wilderness. How close we came to not making it. How many people we lost. Yemma was just the first. But Athena understood. She believed in humanity. She believed in us. In the inherent value of consciousness. Her dreams were so much bigger. She wanted us to reclaim the Earth. To reach for the stars. To build and grow and learn. The city was already changing before she left, turning inwards, forgetting the future. Once she was gone, other people shaped her memory. 
turned her into the symbol they needed. I understand all that, as depressing as it may be. What I don't understand is why she didn't tell me. If she came here to do all this, why didn't she bring me along? It was. But maybe I was wrong, and she isn't as lost as I thought she was. If this is all a test, maybe the answer is waiting for us in the megastructure. Speaking of which, let's get back to exploring. Melville should have reconnected the next station by now. Glad I'm not in charge of solving these. Strap in, this is a long one. You may have heard the story of the carpenter who died to redeem humanity's sins. It's a powerful story, bittersweet, very human. And I just want to tell you that it's true. He was a real person, and his name was John. John Carpenter. He was born in the year 1948, and he was the coolest filmmaker to ever walk the earth. From Halloween to The Thing to They Live, the totally underrated in the mouth of madness, mind you. He just made classic after classic. All of his movies, really fun, really atmospheric, but also really smart. Even when they were goofy, most directors would kill to have made just one of those movies. And what did he get for it? A big, fat truckload of nothing. Well, <laughs> less than nothing. The studios, the critics, even the fans, they hated him. The Thing, okay, for example, which is about as perfect a movie as you can make, completely torn to shreds. And his career never really recovered. Every movie after that was a struggle, and after a while, he just got tired of it and quit. 
he only really came back to movies in his 70s. How many works of genius did we never get because of that? Look, I have a point here. People like Carpenter, people like Alex, they're not always appreciated in their own time. If you just do what's popular, you might never create anything important. Of course, we admire people who did the right thing, who didn't conform, but we only ever admire them after the fact. What matters is to support people when it's difficult. What is freedom? Is it merely to be ruled by those who speak one's language or share one's customs? No, that is merely a more convenient servitude. Is it to have no obligations, no loyalties? No, that is not to be free, but to be alone. What a freedom from hunger and thirst. Here, we are closer to the truth. For freedom requires life. But one may have all the meat and all the wine in the world and still not be free. The most important freedom of all is the freedom to speak one's mind, to make one's thoughts public without fear, and so participate openly and boldly in democracy. It is the freedom of the dissenter and the gadfly, the rebel and the fool, that is the true measure of whether a city is free. Sometimes it seems the only choices we have are renouncing civilization or mindless expansion. But that's not the only path forward. Embracing deliberate control over nature doesn't have to mean destruction. We are a species of artists and artisans, blessed with the ability to transform the raw material of the cosmos into new and better shapes. Shapes that have meaning. With our technology, we can take this chaotic world, so full of suffering, and turn it into a work of art. Hey, 1K. Look, self-reflection is important, but only thinking about yourself, your inner identity, becomes narcissistic. You exist, whether you like it or not, in a dialectical relationship with the world. Identity has no meaning without society, and society has no meaning without the individual. It's in that tension that we really come into being.
Utopia is impossible, but the future that is possible will seem like a dream to those who are alive now. None may know what came first, error or sin, and yet every choice depends on it. Creature of clay, you have taken another step towards the flame. Before you continue, ask yourself, have the gifts of Prometheus ever truly benefited your people, or have they brought nothing but strife? You cannot return to what you were. But you can still change your future. Be humble where you once were proud, and avoid the mistakes that led you here. I've been thinking, there's three towers per cardinal direction, and three entities. You'd think it would be symmetrically arranged. One tower per entity, right? But we haven't seen Prometheus at all. We're built to find patterns. Maybe we're trying to find patterns where there aren't any. This area looks flooded as well. Our ancestors melted a whole lot of ice. After they died, most coastal settlements were claimed by the sea. South of New Jerusalem, there's a whole city under the water. We went there once with Garrus, when I was an apprentice. It was eerie. That's exactly why the Founder created the goal. When you go past the limits, this is what happens. Mother Nature always gets her revenge in the end. This isn't revenge, Al. It's just failure. People, cities, mountains, as far as the sea is concerned, it's all the same. Their mistake was forgetting that, telling themselves nothing would change. It always does. I've had a closer look at the Sombodrome. You know, the one that Wan K fried. It's based on the original prototype with some modifications. 
As usual, the data is a mess, but I strongly suspect there might be a functional version somewhere. I know some of you have heard stories about the answers this device might reveal, but please remember, that is not our main priority here. Keep an eye open for it, but focus on finding Athena. You may wonder why I insist on these unsanctioned, unplanned expeditions. Some think it is because I hate civilization and prefer to lose myself in nature. This is precisely the opposite of the truth. It is because I love New Jerusalem that I have to leave, because it is only when I am here that I fully appreciate what the city means. And also because I believe that if I stayed at home, I would one day be ethically compelled to commit acts of violence against those who, in their arrogance, imagine that humans should live in harmony with the chaos that surrounds us.
wandering around these landscapes, solving puzzles. In a way, 1K's experience must be very similar to Athena's in a simulation. There's one difference, though. Athena was alone. Entirely terrible at this. Go ahead. The southern part of the island is completely dead. No animals, no plants. The soil is too alkaline for anything to live except bacteria. Yes, that's why it's a good location for some of the experiments. Well, if we want to show that we can make the cosmos more beautiful, then why don't we start there? The desert doesn't have to be dead. If we modify the conditions, life can thrive there. And that could be the first step towards spreading life to other worlds. What do you think? I think that sounds like a plan. think about how many cities there are out there under the ocean cities where people lived for thousands of years cities with their own history their own culture all of it lost under the waves if they'd been less greedy they could have kept all that i don't think we can pass moral judgment on an entire species based on the decisions of a handful of leaders but i do think they made a mistake they stopped caring about what they built. They stopped seeing the romance of civilization. Alex, one of the reasons why I'm here doing this is that she's really humble. She has this incredibly positive view of humanity. She believes we can accomplish anything, but it's not about her. She doesn't think that she's smarter or better than anyone else. 
she just looks at us as a species. And even though she can see how small we are in the grand scheme of things, she thinks that we could conquer the stars and give meaning to the universe. Even now, even when none of us are going to live to see it. Isn't that awesome? a mind bender. We have of late been told much about what the citizen owes the city. Loyalty, obedience, gratitude. And I will not argue with those who say that without some loyalty to a greater good, a man is little more than a savage. And I will even say that these days there are more savages amongst us than amongst the barbarians, who we call savages out of ignorance and arrogance. But there is another question that we are rarely encouraged to ask. What does the city owe the citizens? What must it offer to earn loyalty, obedience, and gratitude? And if, as we have said, a city is a kind of machine, should a machine that does not fulfill its purpose perhaps be repaired or replaced? Miranda, would you like to play a game? A game? That sounds like fun. It is. Remember what Alexandra Drennan said about games? They're part of what makes us human. Exactly. And this is a game Alexandra Drennan designed when she was still in school. It's based on her favorite book. Have a go.
Horses are broken, not taught. That is the way of humankind.
paradise cannot be found. It must be built. but fear and despair, and she will do anything to prevent you from reaching the flame. It is she who disrupted the trials of the Sphinx, and who bound me in the... structure is opening again. Everyone come to the VTOL, please. It's time to find Athena. What about Pandora? She seems capable of displacing or controlling the other entities. We should be careful, but we can't let such a vague threat paralyze us. Just keep your eyes open. I've been thinking about. I know the new Alexandria disaster was traumatic. I know accidents like that make us think that it's best to stick to what we have. But what about all the accidents that have happened in New Jerusalem that nobody talks about? The collapse of the Rakowski building. The Calvin Street explosion. The derailment that almost killed Benaroya and Canada. All of those happened because we stopped investing enough resources in our civilization. And if Melville hadn't been put in charge of city maintenance, this would still be happening. It will happen again either way. With how little we have to work with, it's only a matter of time. You see, there may be a price for pursuing progress, but there's also a price for not pursuing. Here we go again. Our main objective is to determine the relationship between the megastructure and Athena. Did she find it? Did she build it? Why was she here in the first place? Explore, dig up anything you can. We need to start finding answers. I can't imagine one person building all this. Don't forget about Miranda. There were at least two of them. I can't imagine a hundred people building this. All right, everyone. Have a look around, but stay in touch and be careful. 1K, can you stay a moment? I'd like to talk to you. I know you can't wait to start exploring, but just hear me out, okay? I'm concerned. Byron is brilliant, but all he can think about is the possibility of finding Athena. She was his mentor, and her disappearance shattered him. 
I'm afraid he's not seeing the dangers of the megastructure. To me, this place seems chaotic, dysfunctional. Yes, it's all very impressive, but I think it's broken. And what we're seeing is, uh, it's nonsense, frankly. You've interacted with it more than anyone. What do you think? Hmm. I don't see it. Or at least I'm not convinced that the pattern is meaningful. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but please, be careful. I'm headed deeper into the megastructure. Not quite sure where I am. Seem to be right in the middle of the machinery. Please, watch yourself, Byron. This is incredible. I don't even know how to describe what I'm seeing. I don't think this is a building. I think this is a machine. Why don't you just tell people that they're wrong? If you tell them the truth, they'll listen. It's not that simple. Straton wrote that the most common error we commit is to think that ideas determine reality, when in fact the opposite is true. Ideas follow from material conditions. Belief systems are formed to explain and justify the way we live. We did not have kings because we believed in the mandate of heaven. We believed in the mandate of heaven because we lived in monarchies. But we have free will. Oh, free will isn't the same as freedom, Miranda. We're not free from the constraints of reality or history. I was shaped by the simulation. New Jerusalem is shaped by its limitations. So what? We're just trapped? History can only go one way? Maybe, maybe not. The question is, how do we free ourselves? How do we build a world where our ideas do shape reality? That's why we came here. I knew it! Athena's here. She built this. That other voice. Was that Cornelius? It definitely sounded like him. Come to think of it, he went on a research expedition around the time Athena vanished. He was gone for years. People thought he'd died. And all this time, he knew where she was? We should talk to him. We will, when we get back. But right now, we have to focus on finding Athena. We are so close. Are those surfaces magnetic? No, it's anti-gravity. Yakut was right. I should have known. 1K, I'm over here. Hold on. I'll open that door for you. as before. Three beams, three receivers. I guess we know what to do. Be careful. The sheer amount of power running through this place. I'll take care of this puzzle. You do the other two, okay? This is kind of fun. Maybe Alexandra Drennan was right. Play is part of what makes us human. Melville, is 
there anything in the system that could tell us where Athena is? I don't know. Someone's logged into the system. But when I try to access that information, it all glitches out. anyone but I think the ground is shaking according to the system whole parts of the interior are moving around like it's rearranging itself I think that's what happened last time when I took the elevator the platform where I got out just moved away
This is fascinating. They were both here, Athena and Cornelius. They had a plan. I found a file that... Oh, oh, I, I can't, I can't, I can't... I, 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 uh... Byron's trapped in the overload. He's failing to disconnect. The whole system's going haywire. 1K, get out of there. Everyone back to the VTOL. Now, 1K, get moving! We can't just leave Byron behind. Yeah, Coop, we have no idea where he is or what's happening to him. But right now, if we stay here, we could all die. The system's going completely bananas. Energy spikes everywhere. We'll come back for Byron, I promise. What have you done, you fools? Mortals are not meant to tread these halls. Why will you not heed my warnings? I am not trying to harm you, creatures of clay. All I wish is to protect you and the rest of your kind. What more must I do to make you understand? If you cannot be reasoned with, I must bar your path. energy emissions are messing with the VTOL systems. Okay, I think I've got it working. Get here quickly, 1K. Get us out of here, Yakut. the southern sites are active. The readings are strangely jumbled, though. Should I set us down? Yes, but just to drop off Melville. What? We're going back to New Jerusalem. The situation has gotten out of control. We need to regroup. Rushing in blindly isn't going to save Byron, but we also need someone to stay here and keep an eye on things. Melville, that's you. All right. I'll see if I can make any sense of these systems while you're gone. Just keep a safe distance, okay? Will do. Good. Well, 1K, I guess it's time for you and me to take a nap. Do not lose hope, my child. In these difficult moments, find solace in your friends and in the home that you share. Here we are. Got an update from Melville. The power spikes are continuing, but no news from Byron. All right. Thank you, Yakut. You get the VTOL ready for the next trip. I'll talk to the mayor. 1K, please head over to the Museum of the Simulation and talk to Cornelius. Let's see what he has to say for himself. The world is full of suffering. Every living organism suffers. Animals kill other animals to eat. And it always ends with death torn apart or wasting away. 
This is what surrounds us. This is what's happening outside those walls every hour of every day. It's our ethical responsibility as sentient beings to lessen suffering. That's what it means to be human, to understand that it is your duty to transform this world into something better. That's what the Founder meant when she said that we can turn the world into a work of art. Despite what happened to him, Byron was right. We have to keep going. This is blasphemy. Byron was punished for failing the Founder's trials, and you want us to dig deeper? Just because you can't accept that suffering is natural and necessary? Please, everyone, stop using the public frequency. If you want to argue, use your interface or speak in person. Hey. Attention all citizens. The Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction Exhibition is now open to visitors. However, please note that due to an unauthorized strike, public transport will be temporarily unavailable. May the Founder be with you. Welcome to the Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction Exhibition. Oh, it's you, 1K. Please tell me, you were there when everything went sideways. Do you think Byron will be all right? That sounds dangerous. Make sure you find him and pull him out. He is a menace, but we need him. But anyway, you come to take a well-deserved break from your expedition. So let's talk about something else. Gehenna was a place in the simulation, a prison where Elohim exiled the mines that didn't fit his plans. In time, the prison became a community with a culture of its own. In the very last moments of the simulation, Elohim realized what he'd done and sent his messenger Uriel to free the prisoners. They were uploaded to the gold disc and their legacy is part of all of us. Text adventures were one of the few art forms available to the people of Gehenna. By continuing to work in that medium, we keep their memory alive. I don't think the role of the artist should be reduced to any single social function. The artist isn't an educator or a moralist. Art isn't about teaching us lessons or imparting values. Nor do I think it's simply self-expression. The best art reaches out beyond the self into something ineffable. The creative impulse can't really be quantified or predicted. That's why artistic freedom is so profoundly essential. Without the freedom to shock, to offend, to transgress, art becomes stagnant.
Good to see you, 1K. Founder bless you, 1K. Now is the time of our great testing. The deceiver Byron has been slain, and we must turn away from the path of sin or suffer the same fate. I don't need to. Do you see any of our ancestors walking around? No? Then the truth is obvious. Mother Nature punished them for their sins. Why would I want to side with those who wish to blacken the skies and kill the oceans? Shameful. You are the completion of the goal. Try behaving like it. Hello again, 1K. These are strange days we're living through, aren't they? It seems to me that we're slowly forgetting all the lessons Alexandra Drennan tried to teach us. Becoming... less human. The ancients never listened to her ideas, except at the very end. They never tried to grow up, to take control of their lives. That was their mistake. I think it would make her very, very sad. The same thing she'd do with any technology. Discover how it works and apply that knowledge for the common good. She worked to the very last moment of her life to ensure that we had free will. I don't think she would tell us anything. Have a nice day. Founder, bless you, friend. I wouldn't worry too much about any of it. The Founder is an idea, a story we collectively tell ourselves. There is no truth for you to discover, and all these amazing technologies are really just more stories for us to believe or disbelieve. You're back. Let's not talk about me. Let's talk about that replication technology you found. You have to get hold of it, 1K. You have to. If you don't, I think I'm gonna die of loneliness. And I think this whole city's gonna slowly suffocate. I mean, do you really think the founder would have designed such a large city if she intended for us to stop at a thousand inhabitants? That's not even enough to fill a village. Who cares, 1K? Who cares? Any amount of danger beats never meeting anyone new again. Welcome back. Is it okay if I ask you something? 
Lately, I've been feeling kind of insecure, seeing the pictures of the megastructure that your team sent. I've started wondering whether the dome is kind of pointless. The dome was meant to contain us, contain our impact. That's what the Fowler intended, right? But did she? If she did, why would she build the megastructure? Mayor Hermanubis said the same thing. I didn't entirely believe it, but if you say so too, and you've seen the place, maybe that's what it is. Thanks for the chat. I hope you find Byron. Founders' blessings. Okay, welcome back to the city. As you can tell, your discoveries have had quite the impact. I decided to take a stand. It started with what you said about extending our cats' lifespans, actually. That got me thinking about our responsibilities towards other life forms. What's life to most living creatures? Fear, hunger, pain, and in the end, death involuntary cessation of existence. That's horrifying, 1K, horrifying. And we are the only ones who can make it better. Yes, carefully and slowly, but yes. That's what civilization is. That's what it's always been. Creating structures to lessen suffering. But this time we include everyone. We use our intelligence to get rid of as much of the horror of existence as we can for all living beings. So, lots of necessary things are very difficult to do. We're the species that eradicated polio, went to the moon, created artificial intelligence. We need to start thinking bigger. Do that more than most people do. But that might be changing. See, I told you it was Athena who sent Prometheus. How do you know it was Athena? Because she's the one who built the giant pyramid? Sure, but how do you know it wasn't Cornelius who sent Prometheus? Because Cornelius was here? And where did Prometheus appear? Ah, uh, come on. How do you know it wasn't Miranda. Maybe she got bored of waiting. I don't buy it. I think Athena is testing us. Why would she test us? To see if we can use those new technologies, like the uh, body replication. If those new technologies are such a big deal, why is she putting them in puzzles? Because play is how we learn. Maybe she's trying to tell us the opposite that it's all just childish stuff that doesn't really matter. The last power failure almost caused a derailment. It all matters. You're starting to sound like Byron. You saw how that turned out. They'll find him. Sure, sure.
Welcome back, 1K. Thanks again for signing that petition. Unfortunately, as you can see, it wasn't enough. Yesterday, there was a sudden brownout in the grid and we almost had a derailment. We've been warning the mayor for months and all he ever gives us is waffle about the goal. This can't go on. What else can we do at this point? You know that we tried to get a referendum organized, but the mayor wouldn't even consider it, no matter how many signatures we collected. I heard it 15 times when he was practicing it. I think Atal, like many of us, feels that the time for change is long overdue. The technology you uncovered on the island is the final catalyst for that change, or it should be. Dude, you're back from the island. So glad you're okay, dude. Especially after what happened to Byron. A lot of people been saying Byron's accident shows the mayor is right. Trying to abandon the goal is bogus. Yeah, I come here all the time. He's a wise dude. I've asked him a lot of dumb questions, and he's always taken the time to answer them. Oh, 1K, what are you doing here? Ah, I assume it has something to do with your expedition? I must admit, I haven't been following the news. Sorry, been a little lost lately. No, not really. When you ask me what I would do now that my job is redundant, I... I don't know, I guess I hadn't thought about it. I had just focused on getting there. And after you left, it all just... rushed over me. The truth is, I don't know who I am without this. Creating new life, guiding people into existence, that's who I am. More importantly, I think, I think that's who I want to be. And if we stop growing, that's the one thing I can't be anymore. That's why I wanted to talk to Cornelius. He was there at the beginning. He knows where we came from. I thought he might help me understand where I could go next. I hope you're right. It's hard to imagine right now. I liked who I was. Now, you said you were looking for Cornelius? Oh, that's... Uh, well, I suppose it shouldn't really come as a surprise. They were very close, you know. After she disappeared, he went away for a long time. On a research expedition, he said. To be honest, Everyone assumed he was working out his grief over being left behind. Many of the first companions were deeply shocked by her decision, particularly Byron. That's the thing. I wanted to talk to him about my future, but he wasn't responding to my messages. So I came here to talk to him and <laughs> he seems to have vanished. No. The truth is that for the longest time, he barely left the museum. He was always at his terminal, working day and night. I asked him what he was doing once, and he said he was saving the past. I did, on my way here. And I messaged most of his other friends. He doesn't seem to be anywhere in the city at all. I suppose so. It seems a little unethical, but then... It is just his work terminal, right? 
Good luck with everything, 1K. And thanks for taking the time to talk to me. So this is what Cornelius was working on? Strange. It looks a bit like the blueprints for the Somnodrome, but no, it's not quite that. Is he trying to isolate something in the buffer? Maybe Melville can make sense of it, but I think this might be a dead end. I need to finish up with the mayor. You can head back to the VTOL whenever you're ready. I'll meet you there. No rush, though. Hey, one okay? k We must listen to the wisdom of the ancient writers, or we will fail the Founder's trial. The megastructure must be rejected. You are the Founder's chosen, but you must be wary. Heed my words, 1K. If you fail this trial, a year from now, New Jerusalem will lie in ruins. The truth is written in the books of our ancestors. In every one of them, the same story is told again and again, that the pursuit of knowledge can only lead to death and grief. That is what all the great ancient visionaries foresaw. Listen to their warnings. Seek happiness in tranquility and avoid ambition. The very idea of a better future is what's rotten. That is what the ancients were trying to tell us. All the problems of the world come from those who think the world needs to be improved. Yes, progress is a fantasy. Things never truly change. All we can do is prevent our hubris from making things worse. Okay, could you join us for a quick debrief? Attending today are advisors from Engineering, the Archive Scholars, and Helga. Yes, don't mind me. I'm just an admirer of governmental transparency. Yes, well, while the mayor is briefed by Alcatraz, he's asked us to review recent events. Byron's loss has unsettled us all. It may be too dangerous to allow this expedition to continue. I agree. We cannot be guided by fear. We must do what's right. Let's not forget the dam's falling apart. We can't depend on Hydro forever. With just a fraction of the power that island can generate, we could grow this city into a planetary society. Or, quite possibly, destroy ourselves in the process.
wise words from one so young. Yet I submit that island holds secrets far more valuable than mere energy generation. What could be more important? The Somnodrome, of course. If we could find a working model, it would herald a sea change in our moral and self-understanding. The question of how we should build New Jerusalem would simply be moot. The Somnodrome was supposed to let us interact with our own subconscious code. It's a cool idea, but it wouldn't necessarily solve all our problems. My own studies prove that we operate on an intrinsic moral logic. It's what makes us human. But our access to it is only indirect. Our ancestors created art, philosophy, and parable to help bridge that gap. The Sonodrome would help us to cut out the middleman and ask the source directly. We would finally have an answer to the great moral questions. So, it's a newfangled way to make the same old mistake of judging who's good and who's bad. Unfortunately, 1K left the Somnodrome inoperable. But there may be a working device elsewhere on the island. Then the question is, what would 1K do if they found it? No! This is much too important to decide on a whim. But it's so much more fun when we're kept in suspense. You all sound so sure of what's best for this city. Do you ever think you might be so busy changing the world for the better, you'll forget how to see that it's perfect already? Um... So clearly there are different perspectives in the room. The only way we are going to move forward is if the team gets back out there. 1K, I believe Alcatraz is waiting for you at the VTOL. We'll be keeping an eye on your stream from here. What can I do for you, 1K? They all sound very promising, of course. Apparently, it's possible to just magic things into existence now. But what is the cost, 1K? There's always a cost. I agree. We can't just leave one of our most important citizens in that death trap. It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. What did the mayor say? I convinced him that we need to keep going until we found Byron. Did he want us to leave him behind? No, he's just concerned for our safety. And he's right to be. But we're going back anyway. Great trials lie ahead of you, my child, but your choices will determine the future. Melville, are you receiving? Yep. Welcome back to the mysterious island, everyone. How's the situation? Whatever Byron did seems to have sent the whole system into some kind of lockdown. I can't access any of the terminals, although I suspect 1K still could. Why would that be the case? When 1K connected to the data stream, the system assigned him a user profile. The rest of us are locked out, which means I'll need your help, 1K, because a lot of stuff doesn't seem to be working. OK. Check it out and see what you can fix. But please remember, what matters most is finding Byron.